Welcome out to Championship Saturday here in beautiful Washington, D.C., the nation's capital, hosting the ACC tournament for the third time in this great conference's history. And what a tournament it has been in a city full of history. Could we see some more tonight? NC State, already the first team to play five games in five days. Could they be the first double-digit seed to win the title and steal a spot in the NCAA tournament? That's part of what's on the line for them, but they'll have to get through Armando Baycott trying to do something his team hasn't done yet in his five years at Carolina. That's when an ACC tournament championship, ACC player of the year, RJ Davis, a big part of their success as they look to capture their 19th tournament title. It is coming your way at 8.30, but right now, nothing but net for the next hour. For the first time in years, the ACC tournament is back in the nation's capital. Barry got it! The Tar Heels are the champions of the ACC. The ACC tourney has a rich history in the DMV area, but it's time to meet Washington, D.C.'s new Supreme Court. On this court, the final score is the judge and jury. The last two ACC tournaments in D.C., the Blue Bloods were crowned champions. JJ, man, he can lace them off and play on my team. It's all a celebration. ACC tournament champs. Don't underestimate the middle of the pack. Anyone can be beaten. Copeland for the win! 15 teams, 14 games, one champion. This is where legacies can be born or cemented. It's that time of the year again. The ACC tournament. What a tournament it has been here at Capital One Arena. This place waiting for the fans to pile in. And I'm sure they will because they have since day one here in the nation's capital. As you take a look at what happened yesterday in the semifinals, North Carolina took care of Ben NC State out Virginia in an overtime game, and that is how we get to the finals tonight. As we say hello, courtside from the floor here at Capital One Arena, alongside our national champs and our Hall of Famer, Coach Jim Beheim, Joel Berry II, Carlos Boozer, Luke Hancock, I'm Kelsey Riggs. It is great to be with you. Coach, you're kind of close to the sidelines where the coaches stand over there. You still like where, where you're sitting with us? Uh, it's better here. Oh, God, you made me nervous. <laughs> I thought you were about to stay over there. Here. He's just outside the box. I'm there, not worried Coach. about yeah. anything. Just. When he was you, never when, outside the when, box When before. you asked me the right question, I'll give an answer. That's perfect. That's <laughs> perfect. Uh, guys, an exciting time. I'm sitting up here with players and coaches who have won 12 ACC tournament titles. You see them starting to warm up behind us. What's it feel like to be in this building knowing that a championship is on the line? Yeah, it kind of gives me chills. I just love the pageantry of the ACC tournament. Love everything that's gone into this. From the very first game we saw Georgia Tech Notre Dame play, there was a buzz about the building. And I love what you said about how the fans have responded. Every game's been loud, energetic. It's been a ton of fun. Oh, it's been amazing. The fans have shown up. This is the ACC title game. I, I expected to be crazy tonight. One half red, one half light Carolina blue. Going to be a great atmosphere. Yeah, this is these teams are competing for the championship. And this is what you play your season for. Whenever there's a championship on the line, you want to come out here and play when the, when the lights are on. The crowd has been great. We got two overtime games here in the ACC tournament. It has been electric since day one. Fans have been great here, really great. A great atmosphere. Expect the same thing tonight. We are in for a classic ACC championship game tonight as well. As you take a look, it is the seventh time that the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack have met in the finals. That is the second most of any matchup. Who is going to be the one that takes home the title tonight? As you see, we're going to get a little in-state rivalry game between these two. But let's dive into some more history and flash it back to 1987 when the rivals met roughly nine miles away in Landover, Maryland. And that was when Jim Valvano and his sixth seed Wolfpack, they upset North Carolina to win the most recent ACC title for the Wolfpack. So that's been since 1987. They've been back in it since then, but looking tonight to try and win their ACC title for the 11th time. But North Carolina, they've won four of the previous six meetings with NC State in the championship game, including the last time they met 
in 2007 in Tampa. The Heels were the one seed, the Pack were the 10 seed, just like tonight as the Tar Heels won that title. So what's at stake tonight? Well, North Carolina can win its first ACC tournament title since 2016. And I mean, seems like without a doubt, lock up that number one seed in the NCAA tournament. For NC State, they haven't won the tournament in 35 years. They can become the first ACC team to win five games in five days. And of course, if they got that ACC tournament win, they would lock up a spot and be a bit stealer in March Madness. So plenty on the line for both of these teams, Booz. What's the biggest thing you think that's at stake tonight? I mean, there's so much. I mean, for this Tar Heel team, they've been a dominant team this season. I think they've locked up the number one seed in the NCAA tournament, like you said. But this group in particular hasn't had an ACC tournament title. That's a big deal to some of these guys. R.J. Davis, Armando Baycott, last time around, they want that championship. They're fighting for that championship. For NC State, they don't have an NCAA bid. They're fighting for their NCAA lives right now to keep their season alive. I remember when we, we had uh, D.J. Burns and O'Connor on the desk like, last night. DJ Burns said, thank you yeah. for making that shot in overtime and extending my career. Yeah. Like, they're playing with their hearts out. This is win or go home for them. So, a lot on the line tonight, guys. Biggest thing for me is NC State and the bid. The bid to the NCAA tournament. I mean, to keep your season going is what it's all about. The auto bid. Uh, they're playing with a ton of confidence. I feel like they have a chip on their shoulder. Like Boo said, UNC's in either way. They're probably a one seed either way. I don't think that will get them to relax. Joel, you and I were talking about when you're playing for a championship, you're going to be all out. You're going to have the energy and the intensity. But, you know, you are comfortably in that NCAA tournament. Yeah, and I think the biggest thing is or the biggest storyline to me is NC State getting into the tournament. I think that's the biggest thing. We know Carolina is going to be in a tournament and be that number one seed. But when you talk about NC State, like a Boos, you said it, it's a lot of these guys last time going around. And they want to be able to get into the NCAA tournament. So if I look at any storyline, that's the biggest thing that stands out to me because you want to be able to get in there and be able to compete in a tournament and keep your season going. I think the thing you have to look at, really, we all know that. But this NC State team is a whole different team since Connolly's gotten in there. They've got more depth. They've got more guys contributing. They, he wasn't even a factor during the season, and now he's – arguably one of their best players in this tournament and you know they are they have a really well balanced basketball team and that's that's what wins games i mean carolina wasn't well balanced in the second game they need to get that balance back if not there could be a big upset here tonight how hard would you play luke if if you knew this could be your last game in college basketball you know if i'll tell you this if i could have one more chance I would give just about anything. If those guys go into the game feeling that way, they want to lay it all on the line, you're going to get NC State's best effort. And you don't look back to the last time these two teams played without talking about NC State being up at halftime in that game, DJ Burns being in a lot of foul trouble in that game. And when we talked about these guys getting ready for the Duke game, we said the last time they played, DJ Burns was awesome and the guards weren't great. They both needed to play well to beat Duke. The same thing tonight. Can't have one without the other and an NC State win. So what does it take to come out here and win a title? Because I mentioned you guys have all won conference championships. We've got two MVPs sitting up here as well. Joel, for you first, I know the storylines are different with both of these teams and the pieces and how they got here, and we'll get to that in a second. But what does it take to actually come out here when it's this game, nothing else, and win a tournament title? Yeah, well, for Carolina, I think – Previously beating NC State twice during the regular season, you can't come out here with a big head and think that will be the same case in this position. There's a championship on the line. NC State is fighting for their season. So you have to come out here and you have to be able to uh, don't look overlook NC State in this situation. And I think for NC State, we've been harping on it. They have to come out here and this is, this is to prolong their season. But in this championship game, it all comes down to the little plays. Think about during this whole tournament, what we've been harping on. Virginia with the free throws. You know, guys diving on the floor, getting loose balls, playing defense. I know it's not the sexiest thing to talk about, but that's what wins ball games is those little things. So when you talk about a championship game, I wouldn't be surprised if we look down at the end of the game and there's those little plays that we're able to sit over there and, and look at and say that was the difference maker. Coach, there's 60 minutes on that clock. We got the teams out here warming up. You coached your team to five wins in conference championships before you came to the ACC. 
Wh where's the coach's mindset at right now at this point in the day? He's, he's back there worrying a lot and <laughs> thinking about everything that can go wrong. But in reality, when you get your team to this stage, they're ready to play. They know what they have to do. You have to go out and play basketball. You can't be going out there thinking, we need to win, or this is a tournament, we need this champion. You can't think like that. You have to think about how we're playing. Let's play basketball the way we've been playing. And although, you know, you want to be playing your best basketball in the first game, to me, when you're in these conference tournaments, I feel like the intensity builds, and it just gets bigger and bigger. Now, I don't know about you all, but I don't know how it could get bigger than the last two games for NC State. The party in that locker room must have been special. The energy, just how the, these teams are feeling. We talked about the vibes with that team last night. I don't know how it could get much better, but if it's going to build, they're going to put on something special tonight. What about having a chance to do something that nobody's done in five and five nights? Hey, in the ACC e tournament. Yeah. Every well, what if we can make history tonight? Kimball Walker. How often do you see that guy every year? Come tournament time. I think tomorrow. I saw that highlight last week, Luke. Right? <laughs> yeah. They These, showed a lot. You're gonna see if they win this game. Yeah. You're gonna see DJ Burns for the next 20 years every single ACC tournament. Or Michael O'Connell in that shot yeah, that he true. made yeah. at yeah. that buzzer oh, beater to get them into overtime last night with Virginia. Let's talk a little bit more about how these teams got here. And we'll start with North Carolina, the one seed, the ACC regular season champs, and the team looking to take home another one. They revamped their roster after a disappointing season last year. Seven new players to the roster, including transfers Harrison Ingram and Cormac Ryan, one of the holdovers, though. R.J. Davis, and man, are they glad that he's still here. ACC Player of the Year, first time for Carolina since 2017. Some new faces, but also Armando Baycott helping secure an outright ACC regular season title, as well as a sweep against their rivals, Duke. So that is always worth the bragging rights, but now it comes down tonight. And Coach, what do you think is the most significant thing about what the journey that we've seen from Carolina, where they were last year to where they are now well the, from the start of this year they played better defense than last year better ball movement than last year from the very beginning and they built on that and their first game here in this tournament was one of the best they played all year a little bit slippage in the second game but I would look for Carolina to come back with that kind of performance because it's been there for them all year they've been very consistent after the tournament early season tournament They've just been really solid all year long. Yeah, I just I just think they went to a championship game two years ago with 50, like 20 minutes away from winning the championship, fell short. Last year they had an up-and-down year, more down than up. This year they come back with something to prove. And look at the season they've had. They're, they're going to be a number one seed in the NCAA tournament. They won the regular season outright. They're playing for an NCAA, I mean, ACC title game in the tournament right now. They just seem... They just seem locked in and focused to me. Much more coming on the Tar Heels path, what it's going to take, the keys in the game for them tonight. But right now, let's take a look at the journey for the 10 seed Wolfpack because it has been quite the journey to get here and play five games in five days. NC State was picked to finish seventh in the ACC in the preseason despite coming off its first NCAA tournament appearance since 2018 last year. The pack started out 13-4, and four, but then they struggled down the stretch, losing 10 of the final 14 regular season games to finish as the 10th seed in the ACC tournament. That did not matter. They had lost four <laughs> straight. They have now won four straight games here in D.C. First team to play five games in a single ACC tournament. The journey for them here in D.C. began with taking down Louisville in day one, and they take down Syracuse day two, two seed Duke on day three, and an overtime thriller last night knocked off Virginia. Tonight they can be the fifth team to beat all three top seeds in the ACC tournament. Luke, how did they turn it around and go on this run the last four games? Yeah, I think they've gotten some of these complimentary pieces to play really well through the tournament. I think it's amazing DJ Horn not playing in that first game. Coach, you've talked about this a few times. Guys like O'Connell stepping up in that moment. Now he's averaging 14 a game, has four straight games in double figures, and had three double figure games the entire season. It's all about guys stepping up at the right opportunity. It can be injuries, like the hip injury. You know, I think about my tournament experience and Kevin Ware breaking his leg playing Ooh. against Duke. Other guys had to step up and be ready to go. And that can sometimes give you a great opportunity to show what you're all about. This team has some depth. They've shown that. And then once DJ Horn came back, especially in the second half of that second game, 
he was electric. So they're starting to build their confidence. There's great pieces to the puzzle here. And they, I like the, the kind of differences in their attack. You know, you throw it to DJ Burns in the post over and over again in overtime. Uh, last night, DJ Horn at times playing in that high ball screen, knocking down shots has been elite. Modiar has done a little bit of everything for this team. So I love the pieces to the puzzle. Yeah, and outside of uh, Jaden Taylor and Michael O'Connell, we saw Ben Middlebrooks also come off yep. the bench and give really good minutes outside of that dunk that he had <laughs> that uh, almost cost didn't, it. Could have cost it. That, all, that almost dunk. <laughs> <Didn't>. <laughs> right. But just getting those pieces playing well, that's important for your team. I think about DJ Burns only playing 11 minutes in the first game without DJ Horn and Ben Middlebrooks coming in. So getting those complimentary pieces going to help them get to this point uh, in the ACC tournament. It's going to be a great showdown tonight in this NC State North Carolina matchup and a rivalry that goes back very far, has a lot of history between these two teams. Meanwhile, on the other side of this break, we've got Commissioner Jim Phillips standing by. He joins the show to give us his thoughts on what we've seen so far in D.C. and the ACC as a whole as we get ready for all the March Madness. Washington, D.C. Not only is it the living and breathing seat of our national government, it's a monument to our nation, its history, its legacy. And it's fitting that the ACC tournament is in town this week because this championship is the crown jewel of Champ Week, the foremost of all the conference tournaments, with a monumental amount of legends and legendary moments. Truly a national treasure. Will it be North Carolina or will it be NC State that leaves Washington, D.C. as the ACC tournament champs again? North Carolina looking for their 19th, NC State looking for their 11th ACC tournament championship as we welcome you back in to Capital One Arena and say hello to Commissioner Jim Phillips who is joining us now. And Commissioner, it's been a great week here in D.C. I know Joel likes it here because this is where he won his MVP. We're back for the first time since his uh, MVP season with Carolina. But we've been talking about the crowd since day one. We've been talking about the atmosphere. In your opinion, how has the tournament gone here in D.C.? It's been, it's been a magical week. It just has. We've been in D.C. twice before this year in 07 and 16. You're never quite sure when you go to a place you haven't been to for a while. And the two things that I always, you know, you hope for and you work towards, one is great atmosphere in a great arena. We've had that. The crowds have been amazing. They, they've been like final eight, final four types of environments. And then you want great basketball. And you want some surprises along with great basketball. That's exactly what we've gotten, got, gotten this week in D.C. So my, my uh, sincere and heartfelt thanks to this community in D.C. that's worked hard, a lot of volunteers, and to the, all the fans that love ACC basketball and the rich in history uh, of the tradition of the conference. It has really exuded and shown the country the best basketball tournament is right here in D.C. being played by the ACC. Yes, it is. Selection Sunday is right around the corner. Obviously, bubble talk seems to be everywhere. I'm in the opinion we got six teams locked in. I know four seem to be solidly in the tournament, but tell me about Wake and Pitt and some of their qualifications. What can you tell us in America? I hope we have a little bit of time here because I want yeah, to take you through. Take time. This to me is a two-pronged process, okay? The first is the history of the league. For 71 years, this is the best basketball conference in the country, okay? When you look at the metrics, and most recently, if you look at the last 25 years, 22 years, we've won eight national champions in the last 22 years. We've won three of the last eight, three different teams, Duke, Carolina, and Virginia. Most recently, we've only gotten five teams the last two years, so we've had 10 teams. We're 21 and 10 in those two years. Best mark of any conference in the country. In those two years, we also have had three of the eight final four teams. Okay, so you, you put that aside, and then you look at this year. So it matters, ACC competition is great. I, I just explained the history in the last 60 seconds. Carolina, number one seed, maybe not even the number one fourth overall, maybe there's third or second. I was watching a little bit of Houston, Iowa State. All right, that's a lot. 
Duke, they have to be a three seed, top three seed. When you talk about five quad one wins, 15 league wins, finish second in the ACC. Clemson, five quad one wins. Quality wins over Alabama, Boise State, TCU. Only team to win at North Carolina this season. Okay, so, so no question there. Six seed or so, something like that. Virginia, third place finish in the ACC, 14 conference wins, no bad losses. To only, their only loss are quad one and quad two opponents. Quality non-conference wins against Florida, which I saw in person in Charlotte to begin the season, Texas A&M, both in the SEC finals. Five road wins this season, when everyone else kind of goes on the road. Pitt, fourth place finish, 13 conference wins in the league I just described that you guys have been talking about all week. Four quad one wins, including wins at Duke and at Virginia. People don't win at those two places. One of the nation's hottest teams, they've won 12 of the last 16, 10 of the last 12. No one who has watched that team can tell me or anyone else that that's not an NCAA team. If you're not, you're not paying attention. Right. You're just looking at metrics. Yeah. And so the eye test and watching games doesn't matter. Wake Forest, quad one wins over Florida and Duke. Much different at Efton Reed. You guys have talked about it. They had three of their losses without that kid. And coach knows more than anyone, when you don't have somebody like that, it isn't like a switch goes on and all of a sudden they start playing better because he's in there. It takes time. The chemistry matters. I would just tell you, I'll be highly disappointed. We've talked about it. We've been talking about it for the last six weeks. And so if the history of the league is any marker and you deserve some credit for that, and what I just labeled the, the, those six teams and the accomplishments, it says it all. And so I get it, but not every league is the same. They're just not. And that's where the cross-pollination of comparing one league versus the other, if you don't use the eye test, then I think you're not applying the rules of the selection overall and not getting the best teams. Well said. Really, really well said. Commissioner, my question, we've had a couple weeks of basketball, obviously Greensboro with the women here in D.C. with the men. 28 games over those two days, I mean those two weeks. What are your takeaways from conference basketball? It's been great. Yeah. It's been terrific. Really thank the people of Greensboro for that week. A bunch of you were there. Um, really handled well. We set an attendance record, I think, back from 09. Quality wins by a bunch of those teams. I think we'll get nine teams in and tomorrow night on uh, Selection Sunday. Uh, so I thank the people of Greensboro. And then, as we talked about earlier in this segment, they showed up here in Washington, D.C. Yeah. The staff and the people that put it together and the fans. So it's been phenomenal. Yeah, Commissioner, I want to talk about the what's going on with the way the ACC is right now. We see everything that's going on with college football. You know, the college football expanding, going to more teams, the way that the money will be allocated. And we're sitting up here talking about the history in the basketball here in the ACC. How important is it to you that this conference remains a basketball, or, or the strength of this conference is basketball. It's really important. That's our history. That's what everybody realizes about the ACC. That's what everybody loves about the ACC. Two, tr three tremendous players and a Hall of Fame coach, right, that poured their heart and soul into this league. We have to build upon that. And as far as the NCAA tournament goes, I, I just think we, we, we have to be thoughtful about any expansion. And I'm not saying we should or shouldn't do it. I want us to study it, right? This is the crown jewel of tournaments. We have the crown jewel of conference championships and tournaments here that we're gonna see the championship tonight, but the, the crown jewel of NCAA championships is the NCAA tournament. So I wanna look at it. Obviously, having a chance to get more teams into the tournament are important, but there's a lot of factors that you gotta be careful of. What does it mean to conference tournaments? You're pressed on the back end because the Masters takes place and our t a TV partner with CBS and Turner doesn't allow you to expand as far as number of days. So there's a lot of work to be done but to your uh, original point, it, it, it really matters. ACC basketball matters. We have to continue to build strength around that, support our coaches, support our student athletes now and into the future. You know, one thing that's always bothered me, we have the play -in. We have that already in date. There's no reason, we don't need to expand the tournament in terms of time period. We could do the same thing in two other cities and add some more teams and not change anything just do what we're already doing, and you could even move those 
that play-in tournament to where the first round games are. So the teams that won would just be at the site that they're at right to play in the regular tournament. They wouldn't have to travel across the country. So it would be a pretty easy fix to add teams without adding days. I think you said it well, Coach. That has to be one of our options that we look at. Because regardless of where the selection committee ends on this and, and it's announced tomorrow, there's going to be some really disappointed teams. And I don't like that when it comes to student athletes because they have a short window. It's been a longer window with COVID. There's been some additional years. But you have four years. And I think I could speak for, for the three of you guys. That's what you dreamed about. That's why you wanted to go to the schools that you went to. That's why he coached for as long and as successful career as coaches had is this opportunity to be in the best basketball conference in the country. But then when March came, a chance to win a regular season, conference championship, but then go play in the best tournament that we have in the NCAA. Well, I think the last one thing on this, it used to be if you could get, if you can win games, you should be able to be in the tournament, like a Wake Forest or a Pittsburgh, if they, which they should be in. And we're leaving teams out that can win games in the tournament. Not just that, well, they'll get in, they can't. These teams can get in and beat people. And that's where it bothers me when teams don't get in. I agree. I, re I really agree. And I don't, I don't like all the metrics. I just don't. I understand the net. It's well-intentioned. And I know it's just one of many um, tools that they use. But we've seen some gaming of the season, uh, uh, of, that net, uh, of that metric, right? Let's not play a strong non-conference. Let's win by a large margin of victory. It helps our offensive efficiency and all the rest of it. And then you get into the conference play, and, uh, and you already have elevated yourself because of that type of direction that you took. And then we, we play 20 conference games, right? And that's, that's, that's two losses across each of those 19 and games 20 with half the league, that's that's difficult. And to your point, Coach, we're leaving out really good teams that can do well, and we've seen that in the a ACC, and you've seen it across the country. You can go to Dayton, and you can win a bunch of games. He's done it well, oh, yeah. right? You can get to the Sweet 16, you can get to the Elite Eight. Sometimes you can even you can get, get to, to the, the final, final Four, four. Yep. exactly. So we, we have to fix that piece of it, because if you're deserving and you've played all season, it's tough to get left out because you just missed by a little bit. Let's err on the side of having too many, not enough teams as we look at who's worthy. This year, for sure, I think the bubble is better than ever. There are going to be some teams that are really disappointed, hopefully not these ACC teams that we are talking about as we all feel like they have made their case to make it into the NCAA tournament. Commissioner, always good to spend some time with you. We appreciate you stopping by. Thanks so much. Thank Thanks. you. My Thank pleasure. You. All right, one team that does not have to worry about the NCAA tournament is North Carolina because they are locked in. Will they be a one? Will they be a two? We'll find out for sure tomorrow. But they do well here in our nation's capital. Six and one in seven ACC tournament games across three seasons here. Most recently winning the title back in 2016. That was their last tournament title. Speaking of the Tar Heels, Jess Sims standing by. She caught up with head coach Hubert Davis just a short time ago. <laughs> coach, what have you learned about your team from these past two ACC tournament games? Well, I don't think I learned anything in these last two games. I, you know, I've loved coaching this team. Uh, it's a team that um, likes being a team. It's uh, a team of great chemistry. Uh, they celebrate the success of their teammates. They understand the importance of everybody buying in in order for us collectively to be the best that we can be. And uh, they've demonstrated that the entire season. And everyone was expecting to see a Duke North Carolina finals for the ACC tournament, but instead you have one of your other fiercest rivals in NC State. How are you going to get the job done? Well, one of the things that we always is focus on us, focus on what is real, and that's our preparation, our practice, and our play. You know, we've put in a preparation, we've practiced, and now it's time to go out there and, and play. And, you know, NC State is a, a terrific team, extremely well coached, and it'll be a tough challenge for us, but we're excited about it. Thank you so much, Coach. Best of luck. All right, thank you very much. Just good stuff there with Coach Hubert Davis, Armando Baycott. You've seen him getting out ready on the court. We've seen the impact he can make on the court. And, Joel, you've got a little deeper dive into this North Carolina team and what they do well. Yeah, this Carolina team can win in so many different ways. Armando with R.J. Davis. But what? look at here. This is R.J. Davis in the middle third pick, uh, pick and roll. R.J. can get downhill and be able to see here he sets up the screen and gets 
Hunter Salas up under the screen and being able to come off of this screen. I think RJ is one of the best players in the country that can get to his mid-range and get into the floater. And you see that's money for him every single time. And then they can do it defensively as well. The one thing that's great about this Carolina team is their switchability on the defensive end. We see Harrison Ingram pushing them out of the uh, from the perimeter. And then look here, switching, being able to switch the ball, high hands. Clemson loves to throw the ball inside. You see Elliot Cadeau with his hands high. Look at the defense on the backside being attentive, making sure that PJ doesn't get the ball. Here we go again, switching. Look who switch on, switches on Ian Shefflin. Harrison Ingram, he can guard one through four, sometimes the five. And then what does Carolina do? They force a bad shot. They just lock Clemson up here on this defensive end, and they can do that with a lot of teams. And then here we see Carolina. Harrison Ingram on the offensive end, being able to back down and be able to draw a double team and then look at the perimeter. He passes it to Elliot Cadeau. He's not a three-point shooter. Cormac can knock it down, but look who you have in the corner. Hunter Salas, I don't know what you're doing on this one. You got the ACC Player of the Year in the corner for a knockdown three. I know he didn't know that at that time, but R.J. Davis has been playing this way all season long. But this, this team can win in so many different ways. Look at this team that's going to hopefully win in a lot of different ways. Tomorrow we have our selection special, the men's and the women's full hour-long show for each, breaking it down first with the men's after we get our eyes on the bracket and then an hour-long show with the women's right here on ACC Network. Still to come here, live from Capital One Arena, we will state our case. We just heard the commissioner talk about the bubble team. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into our guys' thoughts as we count you down to tip off here between North Carolina and NC State in the ACC Tournament Championship. Welcome back into Nothing But Net. Let's go beyond the footprint as we talk about a big 36 hours for North Carolina's hopes for a one seed in the early window. Tennessee got bounced from the SEC tournament, losing by more than 15 to Mississippi State. North Carolina and the balls were jostling for Joe Lenardi's last number one seed before that. Another team vying for the one seed was Arizona, who lost late last night to Oregon in the Pac-12 tournament. They weren't even on Joe Lenardi's radar before yesterday. Meanwhile, let's hear from Joe Lenardi on the one seeds. All eyes turn to the bubble on Selection Saturday. Two teams in particular, one early, one late. Early on, South Florida in the American semifinals, and Oregon later on for the Pac-12 championship. If the Bulls bow out, a bubble spot opens up. If Oregon wins, the bubble shrinks. So all those teams on the cut line, especially Seton Hall, New Mexico, Indiana State, and Pitt, They'll be wearing out the remote controls all day long. You know what that told me? Joe says, you know what? North Carolina is a one seed. We don't even need to talk about that anymore. we got to talk about the bubble teams. Here's how Joe Lenardi sees the ACC when the bracket is revealed. Four bids led by North Carolina as a one seed. We'll see about that. Pitt Wake Forest sitting on the outside. Virginia teetering on the edge. Now Pitt head coach Jeff Capel was asked after the loss to North Carolina if he thinks Pitt non-conference schedule will keep them out of the NCAA tournament. Take a listen. Interesting question. If you look at a lot of the Big 12 teams, they have a lot worse schedules than us. If you look at some of the Big 10 teams that they have projected, they have a lot. Their, their strength of schedule is where ours is or less. Um, again, coming into this game, us in North Carolina were 12-3 and three over the last 15 games since January 20th. So I think that shows that we were the two best teams in this league over that stretch when we figured things out. And you know, before tonight, we had won our last four or five games by an average of 15 points. Our metrics are better than they were last year. Our uh, net, the Ken Palm stuff, whatever that stuff means, it's better than it was last year. I think our league is better than it was last year. Last year, the thing that we heard was that, you know, North Carolina and Duke weren't North Carolina and Duke. Where you're talking about a team today in North Carolina that probably is going to be a one seed, and Duke will be a two or a three seed. Those teams were top ten for the majority of the season. Um, and so I don't, I don't understand all of it. Uh, but I don't know. I'm not a bracketologist. I'm not a, 
I'm not an expert. I'm a basketball coach. I try to worry about my team. I know we've gotten better. I know if you look at over the past since January 20th, I, I think we've played as well as anyone in college basketball. And, you know, last year I remember hearing, well, the early stuff doesn't count because we had an unbelievable win last year against Northwestern. At Northwestern, we beat them by 28 points on the road. They ended up second in the Big Ten, so that's a quad one win. We heard, well, that was November or December, so it doesn't matter. Well, now all I'm hearing is our Missouri loss. That was early November. I mean, that was uh, early December. Um, and so, again, we thought we had a really good schedule. We didn't know West Virginia would turn out like they were. You know, they were picked high in the Big 12. We didn't know that Missouri wouldn't win a game when we played them. They were pretty good. We didn't know they wouldn't win a game in the uh, SEC. So we'll schedule the way we feel like will best put us in position to win and to get to the NCAA tournament just like we did this year. All right, so a lot of good stuff there from Coach Capel and making his case. We hear a lot about the non-conference coach. Why can Pitt not be left out of the NCAA tournament? I just need to say one thing. They won seven road games in their fourth in the ACC. The, the league that's won the most games in the NCAA tournament last five years, last ten years. So that team has to be in there. And I, I believe 100% the committee will put Pittsburgh in the tournament because of those road wins and their end of season, which is not totally everything, but it's more important now because you have the transfer portal, you have teams that do get better, and the goal of the committee is to get the best teams in the tournament. Pitt is one of the best teams on the bubble. Booze, people talk about the resume and they talk about the eye test. Tell me what your eyes see from this Pitt team that you just saw play in person. Man, they're amazing. They've gotten better as the season went along. Their freshmen have grown up. Their freshmen are playing like sophomores or juniors, to be honest. Um, they did a great job winning at Duke. They did a, a great job battling the number one team in the ACC in Carolina last night here in this game. Had opportunities to win that game. They fell a little short. But Pitt is a, is a team that could possibly get to the Sweet 16. Yeah, the quality of their row wins is what stands out to me first. But when you talk about the eye test, what does that really mean? You can look at the record and say, yeah, they've been great down the stretch, really since that big game at Duke, one of those quality road wins. But also the freshmen. Ooh. If you're going to talk about early season stuff, these freshmen are dramatically better now than they were at the beginning. And when you start to factor in that eye test, that has to be a huge part of the puzzle. And you look at what Coach Capel said, 12 and 3 in their last 15 games. I think that says it all because they've gotten better. November and December, they were dealing with young guards, guys that needed some time to gel and, and, and learn how to play together. And then you talk about from January 20th on until this loss yesterday, that's all. That's majority of the conference play. And they've gotten better and better. So I look at that that record right there, and that shows that they, they're playing good basketball at the right time. Joe Lenardi right now has them on the right side of the bubble, of course, wait, or right on the wrong side of the bubble, looking to make their way in. So what do you need to keep in mind if you're rooting for any of these ACC teams that are on the outside of the bubble? Here's what you need to know. Our, our researcher, Jake, made you a bubble rooting guide for tonight. These are the teams you need to root for if your team is on the bubble. You don't want the team on the right side to pick up wins or potentially steal a bit away from a team, even the ACC game tonight as you see, would have a huge impact on the bubble. If the Wolfpack win, they are a bid stealer. If North Carolina wins, then it is exactly what was expected there, according to those who are projecting the bubbles. Meanwhile, DJ Burns hoping to be part of what can be the bid stealers. Oh, he's a vibe right here, right? The slow-mo walk-in. <laughs> Big like fellow that. ready for this game. His fifth in five days, he went off. And overtime last night, will he be able to bring that same energy tonight? We're 35 minutes away from tip-off from the ACC Tournament Championship. As NC State prepares for the title game tonight, we also take a look back 50 years ago at that title game back in 1974. A top five matchup between Maryland and NC State in a game that is considered the greatest ACC tournament game of all time, if not the greatest ACC game, period. That title game itself, though, was just one chapter of the remarkable and historic story for the Wolfpack. Justin Walters has more. It 
it's unbelievable that we are all able to get together. We're all like brothers to each other. We grew up together, so to speak. We went into battle together and we were victorious in battle. So it's a great group of guys. They're all champions and I'm just proud to be a part of that team. They have done it. The Wolfpack has won the national championship. We were 57 and one over a two year period. Won the first national championship in North Carolina State and will go down in history as one of the greatest college basketball teams ever. The 1974 NC State Wolfpack finished the regular season 24 and one, including being undefeated in conference play. But back then, the NCAA tournament had a field of 25. So the pack still had to win the ACC tournament to get the one and only spot from the ACC into the big dance. There was a lot of pressure on that game. The only one team could represent the conference and Maryland was probably playing the best basketball of the season. They were ranked number one in the country. We were ranked number four by most polls. And here we are recognizing that one of the four best teams in the nation was not gonna go to the NCAA tournament. And certainly we didn't want it to be us. With the season on the line, legendary Maryland head coach Lefty Drizel decided to focus his defense on back-to-back -back ACC Player of the Year, David Thompson, which left seven foot two inch Tommy Burleson with a mismatch. The ball came in to me. I had nobody but Elmore to guard me. I have a, like a five and a half foot drop step. That will move you. He couldn't stop me. I mean, he, he's right there on my hook shot. I mean, he's, he's not gonna get up and get it. As many good games that I saw David Thompson play, I don't know that I ever saw a better individual performance than that 38-point game from uh, Tommy Burleson that night. Lefty, he focused on David. He said, David Thompson is not going to beat us. Well, we had two weapons, and that's what made us so dominant. That was a big relief to be able to get past Maryland because we played them so many times in the last couple of years, and every game was close. For some reason, we always found a way to come out victorious. It's all over. The most exciting basketball contest ever played in the ACC. The Wolfpack were ACC champions and cruised to the NCAA Final Four and a rematch against the only team that beat them that season, John Wooden and the UCLA Bruins, winners of seven straight national titles. We're fired up, looking forward to going out to the big guys, going out to UCLA, you know. We didn't really know much about David Thompson at the time. We sure found out on March 23rd, 1974. Not that I remember the date. The top two teams in the country, North Carolina State and UCLA. It was a great game, it went back and forth. He gets some long jumpers, he's not that good. He can move him down the floor now. Second overtime, they run out to a seven point lead and uh, Coach Sloan called timeout. I said, guys, you gotta make something happen. Sure enough, we were able to go out and do it. I drew a charge, David made a steal. Uh, within 30 seconds, we'd cut a seven-point lead to a three-point lead, and now we were back in the game again. David Thompson was the greatest college basketball player I ever played against, by far. I just keep seeing visions of David Thompson <laughs> flying by us and taking what we thought was going to be ours. That was a great comeback to be that down by seven with two minutes and 31 seconds left. It was the most dramatic game I've ever been a part of. The Wolfpack of North Carolina State has defeated UCLA. Knocking them off their throne it was a great game. They were a great team. But even with that, we still had one game to go before we win the national championship. And that was our goal. Our goal wasn't to beat UCLA. Our goal was to win the national championship. The path to that goal, even to this day, remains remarkable. Winning one of the greatest games in ACC history in overtime. Ending one of the greatest dynasties in sports history in double overtime. But in the season's final game to make their own history, NC State dominated Marquette, start to finish, to win the school's first national championship. You have a bunch of 18, 19, 20-year-old kids together, 
setting the goal before the, the year to accomplish something that, that grand and to get it done, you know, it's something you'll never forget. All those guys would be good friends, best friends, would be linked for life. We cannot be around each other for years and come back together. It's just like back in 1974. I love those guys. 50 year anniversary, pretty special. Coach, before we talk this game, what do you remember about that 74 team? These guys don't understand. They were great teams, two great teams. And we don't have teams like that anymore. And to just, to have to get that one win, to get into the tournament, and Maryland could have won the tournament as well, but David Thompson was a great, great player, and they had a great team. So this NC State team today is certainly being, is hoping to be one that people are talking about for the next 50 years or so, if they can do what they want to do tonight. It's already five games and five days for the first time in AZC tournament history. But what will they be able to do here against North Carolina? That's DJ Horn, been battling a bit of a hip injury, but he seems like he's been good to go the last couple of days. Meanwhile, our Jess Sims is good to go. She caught up with their head coach, Kevin Keats. Coach, four games and four different leading scorers. How does that paint the picture of what kind of team you are? You know what, um, Jess, we're playing extremely hard. And, um, you know, when we put this team together, we, we knew that we didn't have that one guy that was going to be consistent in leading us in scoring. Um, DJ Horn has actually been that guy. But um, we're better when everybody else is getting involved. And so far, it's been amazing. You know, you think about the four games and, you know, I've been here a long time. When I mean, we got here on Monday and then, you know, you play Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and, and someone has stepped up every game that we've had. And ACC finals tonight against North Carolina. What do you need to do to prevail and make history? Well, I mean, we're playing a really good basketball team and they're fresh. Um, and, you know, I think they played two games and we played four. You know, consistently we got to do a great job of getting back in transition. I mean, they're great in transition. Uh, the first couple of games they really beat us on the, on the boards and we've got to do a good job of blocking those guys out. And offensively, we got to kind of have a lot of player and ball movement. We got to get that ball to different places and really play inside out, whether we're throwing the ball inside to DJ Burns or we're driving the ball and kicking it. Thank you so much for your time, Coach. Best of luck. Yes, thanks. Just thanks, regardless of what happens tonight, it is going to be potentially a historic run for NC State, and they have already been on quite an impressive run. Since the creation of the NCAA tournament in 1939, only one other team has played five games in five days in a single tournament. That's UConn, won all five in the 2011 <laughs> Big East tournament, and then six straight to win the national title. That's a comp that I think both Pac fans like to probably see, and you guys touched on earlier. You always see that shot from Kimba, but Luke, I want to take us a little bit more inside. And Kevin Keats, you played for him. Five games in five days. You said you'd rather play five games in five days than be worn out at his practices. That's what I remember from practice with Coach Keats. I mean, we played a little different style. We got up and down a little different way. But these guys want to play a lot of minutes, and this is fun. I mean, playing these games, this is what you work for. And it's not just working for your four years. This is 20 years for a lot of these guys to get to this moment. And I, I just got to imagine in the championship game with everything on the line, you can throw to the side that these guys are tired. Worry about your little bumps and bruises, injuries later. You'll have time for the ice bath. You got to go find a way to win this game. And I just can't wait for the moment. Yeah, I just think as a competitor, these are the stuff you dream of as a kid. You get a chance to play the number one team in, in the conference, maybe one of the number one teams in the country, and get a chance to knock them off for a title. That's something you dream of as a kid. So for these NC State guys, they're ready for this moment. They're going to be excited. Doesn't matter if it's five games and five nights. They will overcome that tonight. I mean, what are they, 19, 20 years old? <laughs> young legs. Young legs. They got young legs. And when you look back on this moment, this is something that they'll always remember. Like, think about if they come out here and accomplish this tonight. They will remember this for the rest of their lives. Like, the one thing that I hate about coming into March Madness is that I get to see the Villanova shot all the time. <laughs> they will be able to see, if they're able to get this done tonight, they will be able to see this th that clip of them making this run over and over again. And that's special, and that's what you come to college to do. 
is to make memories and to have and to be a part of games like this. Coach, how do you go from losing the last four and struggling so much down the stretch to this run that NC State's on? I think it helped them when Horn was out. They got some other guys involved. They got the win, and then they build on that. And now they're really confident, and this game is going to be decided by those guys, Connolly coming off the bench, Taylor, guys that weren't big factors two, three weeks ago. I think they're going to decide this game. It's been such an incredible ride for these guys. Michael O'Connell, a big part of it. He was only scoring double figures in three games leading into this. Joel, he's done it in four straight games. Coach mentioned the pieces. How much do those other pieces for NC State need to step up? Yeah, they, they all need to step up. Like Coach Keith said, they're better when they're getting a lot of guys involved. And that's the type of team this is. They do it by committee. When they're moving the ball, especially in the half-court offense where they can get stagnant at times, that's when they're at their best. So getting that moving side to side, getting Michael O'Connell, getting Jaden Taylor, those guys need to be involved because they will need to be able to keep pace with the way that Carolina can score the basketball. I think it's on both ends of the floor too, right? Because in the two games they played during the regular season, Harrison Ingram was the MVP in both those games, stepped up huge. I don't know if I've seen Mo Diara play better than he has in these last four games in this tournament. They got to be able to stop those guys on the other end. We've said it all year long, UNC is best when Cormac Ryan and Harrison Ingram are adding to that puzzle, right? Those guys for NC State got to do it on both ends, defensively and making shots on the Here's other. Here's an Ingram had 19 rebounds the first time that these two teams met, which brings us to the big guys and DJ Burns and Armando Baycott. What are you expecting out of that matchup? I expect a heavyweight bout tonight. I think they're going to be going at each other, being aggressive. You've seen in this tournament, the referees have let the guys be more physical, which yep. I love that. DJ Burns took over overtime. Armando Baycott was from, from start to finish aggressive as hell last night. Both of these guys are going to be going at each other. And don't forget what Luke Hancock just said. Mo Diara has been a silent MVP for NC State, getting rebounds, blocking shots, scoring the ball, making some free throws. Like, he's been an X factor all across the board. It's going to be a fun game tonight. RJ Davis has been great all year. I expect him to be great tonight. And NC State's going to have a, they're going to have a tough time overcoming him. R.J. Davis, ACC Player of the Year, first time for North Carolina since 2017. Teams have just gone back into the locker room. Looks like we've got about 9.45 on the clock here until we start getting ready for tip-off. As you see R.J. Davis there just a short while ago, the ACC Player of the Year. We talked... We had the opportunity to talk with Baycott yesterday and RJ the day before. They're playing their best when those two are going off. But so many pieces around them. More to come here from Capital One Arena next. And off to Barry, he'll put it up with six on the clock, and Carolina has reclaimed the lead. The North Carolina Tar Heels are the champions of the ACC. That was a pretty special one in D.C. for the Tar Heels, and our Tar Heel, Joel Berry, MVP. Will it be another special one in D.C. tonight? Armando Baycott definitely hopes so, hoping to bring them first ACC tournament championship since he's been a part of this team. Meanwhile, speaking of him, he caught up with Christine Williamson back in the day. You've been here for so long. Like, yes. Not only have you been here pre-COVID, pre-NIL, but you're also here in the Roy Williams era. Come up top, Armando. Come up top, Armando. What did you learn from him that you feel like you still carry with you? Well, the greatest thing I've learned from Coach Williams was the importance of rebounding. Up! Come on! At a boy, at a boy. I can just remember my first day on campus, just him telling me, rebound, rebound, rebound. That's something that I stuck in my head all the way to now. <laughs> you hold the rebound record. Yes. <laughs> so it makes sense. Now that you have Coach Davis here, how has the program kind of changed under him? Just the fire that he has every day is something that's like trickled down to us. And I think this team this year, just the passion that we play with and how hard we play with is a direct reflection of Coach Davis. I mean, when is the last time we've had a UNC team be top five, top three in defense? Something that you don't usually see, but that's, I mean, 
The coaches, man, they've been doing a great job all year. And I think that's what separates great teams from good teams, just being able to listen to what the coaches have been saying. Do you think that this team can actually win a championship? Definitely. I think we got all the pieces to win a championship. We got a great five, great bench, great coaches, and we're a team. And I think that's what you need, especially in March. Well, Armando and his friend RJ have been such a big part of this team. And with his final free throw yesterday in the semifinals, RJ Davis reached 2,000 points, joining Armando Baycott as two of the eight members of the 2,000-point club in North Carolina history. Second ACC duo, the 2,000 points at the same time, joining uh, guys back from the mid-80s. Meanwhile, you see we are counting you down to tip off, and you'll get to see Armando and RJ. What's what's the feeling like right there, Joel? Yeah, you're about to trying to stay tunnel. loose. You got the jitters going. You got everything's flowing right now. You're ready to get out here on this court. You're itching to get ready. And this is the moment right here where the lights come on and you step up. Yeah, the, you're trying to get the jitters out, but right now your emotions are high. You're just trying to feel the vibes from the crowd. Everything you're trying to do, just like normal, but it's very not normal when you're chasing championships. Emotions are super high. You're trying to just fall into your normal routine because this is what you've been preparing for. You treat every practice like a championship practice. You treat every game like a championship game, so it, it becomes normalized for you. But. There's hella anxiety going on right now. They, their hearts is pumping. They playing for a, a, a tournament title right now, baby. The coach is just worried about everything right now. <laughs> let's just get a good bucket here. Let's start out. Let's get a bucket here. Let's not get shut out. That, that didn't change, coach, after year five or 10 no. or 30 or 40. Never changed to the yeah. last game. It's the way it works. I love it. All right, we'll see this. Uh, game go down in just about 12 minutes here. Let's talk about some of the big keys. We talked about some of the big players, but Joel, you see DJ Burns was in the middle of that. How big is he? And especially five games in five days, it's going to be a physical battle inside. Yeah, he's very key. He, to be able to get the ball to him on the block and be able to navigate, kind of do what he did against Jordan Minor, but he'll have someone who has a little bit more size and, 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 and physicality down there against him. But DJ Burns is a guy who can get it done if they start bringing the double team, which will play in their favor because he can pass the ball. That will help this NC State uh, team be able to get get things moving on the offensive Who's, end. I like what he said yesterday when he said he wasn't getting the foul calls and he realized that he needed to turn it up a notch himself. Yeah, that's, that's just in the middle of a game and you get a feeling for how the refs are calling the game or not calling the game in that case. And he was like, you know what? I ain't going to worry about the fouls. I'm going to take this back to street ball and just get buckets. And that's what he did. He didn't get to concern himself with that. But for NC State, he has to establish himself early in this game. Yeah, it's about the pieces to the puzzle to me. I think DJ Burns has to be great. It'll be tougher because it's not just having to battle against somebody who's a great defender and scoring on one end. You're going to have to defend at a high level on the other end. Can Mo Diara keep this pace up, especially we've talked about him fasting for Ramadan. That hasn't stopped. He's still doing that. Um, all these guys, it's just tough to keep your legs going. Can they keep this high level of play up? Again, all the pieces to the puzzle. Yeah, it's, it's time to stop analyzing. Let's yeah. just play the game. Let's yeah. see what happens. It's not time for us yet. We got 11 more minutes, oh, coach. No. We got we to talk this through. I do want to hear your thoughts, though, because you said you won't look at those last two games if you're no. North Carolina or NC State. What's the biggest difference with NC State right now? It's their balance. And when you play North Carolina, you have to get back. You can't turn them over. You give them turnover buckets. And you've got to get back on defense. Or you can't beat North Carolina any time, any year. But even if you can do all that, it's still not easy. Yeah, another way to do it, you can't take bad shots. Those are just like yeah. live ball turnovers to lead to runouts, and I agree with Coach, cannot let UNC keep getting out in transition. You see Coach Hubert Davis there taking it all in, getting his team ready. We are just about 10 minutes away from tip-off over on ESPN. We'll have more as we make our final game picks and predictions coming your way on the other side of this break. But right now, let's send it over to uh, Schulman and Billis on the call. Well, what an interesting matchup we've got in the ACC championship game. A likely one seed in Carolina, Jay, against the NC State Wolfpack, who need to win to get into the NCAA tournament. And if they win, it'll be their first ACC championship since 1987. 
Really an amazing run by NC State to play five games in five days, have a chance to win an ACC tournament championship. Uh, I, I'm just amazed. And the way they won that game uh, against the, uh, Virginia will go down in the history books. But for NC State to win this one, uh, they're going to have to play like they did in the first half at Chapel Hill. Uh, come out aggressive. Uh, DJ Horn's going to have to knock down shots from the perimeter, and they're going to have to do a good job getting the ball inside to DJ Burns, and Burns is going to have to make good decisions. I I'd be surprised if North Carolina decided to double him. He catches the ball so far off the lane and then backs down the defender to the basket. Uh, I think Carolina would be content to play him one-on-one -on -one and see if he can score 30 on you. Uh, just make sure everybody else doesn't go crazy. But North Carolina's transition game, they're rebounding. They're, they're the best rebounding team in the ACC, and they've proven it and proven it this tournament. They're out rebounding teams by 18. Uh, that's going to be a huge challenge for NC State, especially in game five in yes. five days. Great matchup. Burns and Baycott, of course, R.J. Davis, player of the year, playing for the Heels as well. The Wolfpack and the Tar Heels, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. What a performance by Iowa State. We're in Washington, D.C., college game day, covered by State Farm tonight in Capital One Arena, now in nation's capital. A pair of old rivals square off in the most storied conference tournament of them all, the ACC title match. This is the seventh time NC State and North Carolina have met for the crown. The Tar Heels 4-2 in the previous six. The Wolfpack, well, they haven't won the ACC tournament since 1987 when it was in the greater Washington, D.C. area. And they knocked off North Carolina. North Carolina, a rare one seed, they're hoping the fate that has befallen so many doesn't befall them. In the Big Ten semifinals today, Wisconsin and Purdue tied at 62. Big fella Zach Eady gave him a three-point lead after the free throw. Two-point game now. And how about this play? Chucky Hepburn to put it over to Frank Sutter out of bounds play. Don't settle. Attack the basket. Hepper with a great finish. AJ Store slams down a put back in overtime. Here's Store. By the way, RD, I called it earlier today. He made critical shots to keep this ball game in the team. Purdue by one, and look at Max Klesman floater. I'm not sure I called Max Klesman. I'll tell you one thing, he's not afraid of a big shot to walk for transfer. Lance Jones with a transfer, couldn't get it to go, and on Wisconsin, and Boiler down. Wisconsin will go to play for the Big Ten Championship against Illinois. Now, top seeds in conference tournaments, and many of these are going to be one seed in the NCAA tournament tomorrow when the selection committee announces its pairings. UConn struggling with Marquette. Marquette's a really good team, even without Tyler Kolick. Huskies are up six at the moment. Houston, Purdue, Tennessee, Arizona all going down. Now, look, Purdue lost to a good team in a hotly contested game. That might work out just fine for them long term. Houston's still going to be a one seed because of the proverbial body of work. That was concerning. Nearly 10 minutes without a field goal. I know Iowa State's a good defensive team. That's, that gives you pause for what's in, in store for the Cougars. Big picture, I love it. Houston, I've said all season long, they score 33 points a game off second chance points and turning their opponent over. At times, they can get stopped. They didn't get stopped. They had four flat tires today. Now, Iowa State had a lot to do with that. Great. But as you start filling out your bracket, you better look at teams that take care of the ball, can make shots, and they're competitive. Houston is not a lock to get to the second week, and they're not a lock to get to the Final Four. They have scars like everyone else. College basketball this year, a microcosm of what's happening in the tournaments. But we all do agree they're still in the one line, right? Oh, yeah. I, I okay. think so. Yeah. Right, so yeah. if you look at it, if UConn, they're in a dogfight right now with Marquette. I don't know what the score is. But it, was you, six, it was a six-point game at last. Okay, yeah, if UConn, UConn is up. able to win that game, I would probably have UConn as number one overall seed. I probably think that loss, the way that loss was, I would probably have Houston four on the one line. Look at that note, the fewest points by an AP number one team since 1982. Now, it takes a little while to research some of these things. I'm going to get our research staff on this. Can you think of a team that was a one seed on Sunday losing its final game before the NCAA tournament like that? At 29. Either being held by, you know, held to 41 or losing by 28. I mean, that's a... Uh, I don't I think they'll go, go to four. I think that they might go to three. They're not going to go to four. I think UConn's going to be the overall number one. Okay. 
I think North Carolina is going to be between two and three. But North Carolina has got to still win this game. I, I hear That's but, fair enough. By the way, Purdue has more quad, win, quad one wins than anybody. Yeah, I, they have more quad one wins than anybody. Yeah, can I tell you, I don't really ding Purdue for that loss uh, today. I mean, look, they, they lost. They played a good team, and they lost on a late bucket. You know, that, that happens sometimes. So I'm not really – I don't think Purdue gets hurt that much. I do wonder if Houston might slip a couple spots in terms of the overall seeding because of the way they lost. But the team that has really come in, and as much as anyone, along with UConn individuals, is taking care of business. It's the team that we will see tonight. North Carolina, uh, Armando Baycott has talked to us a couple of times over the course of this weekend about how important it is to he and his teammates to win the ACC tournament, something they haven't done since 2016. Look, I think for Armando Baycott, you're going to see North Carolina. They're not going to double Burns down low. Armando Baycott, they can play him in single coverage. And I think the way he's been playing throughout this tournament, He's been sprinting the floor, Seth. He's been first to 50-50 balls. He's been cracking in the people. Uh, he's guarding other guards on the perimeter when they had to switch against Pitt late in the clock. I think you're going to see another level to try to get to the legs of Burns down low as well. Make him run. This is old school Carolina basketball. Play for the post. Defend. Rebound the ball. Get out in transition. Play for each other. Baycott's been terrific. His footwork around the basket. He is fighting for position. I used to have the same with Biggs. If you're not gaining position, you're losing position. He is Always fighting and gaining for position. Carolina has played as well as anyone in the country. But this NC State team's not going to roll over. You're going to see a slow pace. You're going to see maybe when Elliott Cano gives up the ball, yeah. his defender in help. You're going to see a lot of a lot of tempo-oriented things. But Carolina, you said it earlier today, Jay Will and I agree. They're playing as well as any team in college basketball, and they are as complete eight-man rotation as any team in college basketball. And you also wonder if they can't play slowly against North Carolina. This is the fifth game in five days for North Carolina State. UConn, back in 2011 with Kemba, did it and then ended up winning all of them in the NCAA tournament as well. But you wonder if NC State runs out of gas a little bit in the second half if the game gets going. That's going to be a big key as they try to become the first double-digit seed ever to win the ACC tournament. I, I don't think NC State can allow the game to get going, RD. I think they have to really slow down the pace. You know, I, I think the way you beat North Carolina is you really have to make them impatient. Like, they're used to having a lot of possessions throughout the course of a ball game because of their defense, because of physicality, because of getting offensive rebounds. I think if you can secure defensive rebounds, you can make Cadeau kind of play that mental psychological game with him as a scorer and make him kind of indecisive with the ball and take care of the ball, slow down the tempo of the game, they have a legitimate chance. Well, NC State has the guards to control the tempo, and that's important. You can't turn it over, you can't take bad shots because the ball's going to be run right down your throat. Having said that, I don't think we really appreciate enough what this Carolina team is. Cano's giving them a burst. RJ Davis is the player of the year, and he plays like that each and every night, especially in the second half when they need him. Harrison Inger can guard your point guard, your power forward. He is a problem offensively. He is a problem defensively. That bench, when you bring Trimble off the bench, when you bring Walker, just to me, they're as complete a team as I've seen in a really long time, and they got a little bit of an edge. And I also know, we know they're going to be dancing. Now they're dancing literally. Yeah. They bring the big boom box through the bowels of the arena here at Capital One Arena. And, you know, we've talked about the difficulties of the one seed this year in the ACC tournament. Uh, North Carolina, no one seed has won the ACC tournament since 2018. Wow. And, and Harrison Ingram reminds me a lot of old school Ron Artest. Like, not Meta World Peace. I'm talking about Ron Ron from Queensbridge. Wait, you gotta, you gotta delineate between the two. Just with the way he defends Seth Swiss Army knife, gotta connect got shots. He doesn't mind living in the trenches where he can do the dirty work for them defensively. Jay, well, you played against Carolina. Do you think this team is a little different and they got a little bit of that? Chip, that little bit of that edge, what they went through last year, not making the tournament, the struggles they had. I think that they grew from this, and I think that Hubert basically set the standard that you put on this jersey, you represent something. We got to play it a certain way. Now, by the way, vice versa, RD, North Carolina State, if they win this game, I think it's the biggest win for the program since they won a championship in 1980. I mean, I know they won the ACC against North Carolina as a 60 uh, in 1987, but five
five games in five days with the way they play against the Hills that are a team that can win a championship, it might be one of the biggest wins in program history for the Wolfpack. You know what? I, I think there, there's some validity to that, Jay Will, because of this also. They are the overlooked program in the triangle. Yes. No doubt. It, it really gets under their skin that neither Duke nor Carolina regard them as their biggest rival. Yeah, you know, they're, they're sort of... Uh, the perception is they're an annoyance, right? Yeah. You know, so if they can beat Duke and then beat Carolina on this stage Oof. and go to the tournament and follow that four-game loser to end the season with a five-game run here in D.C. to claim that trophy, it'll be one of the greatest moments in program history. Mm -hmm. College game day is covered by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. You're watching College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Back on College Game Day, covered by State Farm. Washington, D.C. tonight, the ACC Championship game. North Carolina, North Carolina State coming up in a few minutes. Uh -oh. Joe Minardi's bubble. Now, New Mexico, they not only play San Diego State, this just in the College Game Day. Richard Patino and the Lobos have a bid. I see you in Dayton, and I raise you Rick Petito in Dayton. Would you like that? St. John's would I like it? Go. That would be amazing. Go ahead. Patino, by the way, if St. John's gets in, he'll be the first coach, the elder Patino, to take six different teams six? to the NCAA tournament. Six. There's Hubert Davis, who has an appearance in the national championship game just a couple of years ago trying to sweep the regular season and win the ACC tournament for the first time since 2016. There's R.J. Davis. That's why I think this North Carolina team is different. You had a national championship appearance. The next year, with a lot of the same cast, you don't make the tournament. And so you talked about it. Having that to, to kind of fester in that, to soak in that, the way they play, like they just, their mentality feels so different to me. It feels more like UConn to me. It feels like they have dogs offensively and then defensively the way they have bought it. They went to the championship game. They didn't validate that. They built up a chip. They rebuilt the, the Carolina brand a little differently. They went into the portal. It wasn't with high school guys. It wasn't with just one freshman. It's pretty interesting how they rebuilt it to get it to this point Stay in old. one year. Stay yeah. old. And Harrison Ingram has been so good. He's been great against North Carolina State this year. He had a 19-rebound game in the first meeting and then turned around when they had the rematch and scored 22 points. He hasn't had a double-figure game in either scoring or rebounding in the ACC tournament, but he's played extremely well on defense, passed the ball well, and he'll be key in that regard tonight, too. We'll get your tip-off coming up in just a little bit here from D.C. on Championship Night in the ACC. College game day is covered by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Welcome back out to Capital One Arena. I'm sure you can hear through our mics what's happening because we've got an in-state rivalry showdown coming to you from the nation's capital. NC State and North Carolina getting ready to go head-to-head. -head. The lights are down low. The starting lineup's about to be announced, and we are ready to make our picks here courtside from center court. So before we get into that, give me final thoughts. Who's what happened has to happen early in this game for North Carolina? Establish themselves right away, play their tempo, push the pace, see if they can get NC State legs tired. Yeah, I think if Carolina can get out in transition, they have a huge advantage in this game. I'd push the pace early. For NC State early, what needs to happen? NC State has to keep putting pressure on Carolina's offense. Push them out, don't let them get into a rhythm, and then in transition, build a wall and don't allow them to see lanes. DJ Burns can establish himself early. That will help. All right, we have got just about a minute to go here and five minutes until game time. Let's make some picks. Is NC State going to make history, or is North Carolina going to win the regular season and the ACC championship? Blue, who you got? Carolina playing as good as anybody, a national championship contender. But I think we see an NC State feature about these boys for the next 50 years for this run. The complimentary piece is playing so well. I'm going NC State. I was really rocking with NC State last night. I had a late night, went to bed late, woke up early, played some golf, and I was tired. 
And I was tired. And I'm like, they got to be tired after five days and five, five games and five nights. I got Carolina. I'm going Carolina. I think they're playing uh, one of the best teams in the country right now. They came into this tournament and made a statement. I'm going with Carolina. It's North Carolina. They got to win this game. I had a hard time with this as well because North Carolina is playing so good. But this NC State team feels like they're on a mission. If Destiny. they win, they're playing in an NCAA tournament. I'm rocking with the Wolf back tonight. O'Connell, give me another buzzer beater. I want to see it. We'll be back with you for an hour long after the game right here on ACC Network. Here in the nation's capital, a title is on the line tonight at the ACC Tournament. The one seed, Carolina, against the 10 seed. And Wolfpack fans are saying, why not us? Cinderella is still alive and kicking here in Washington after having won not one, not two, not three, but four consecutive games. But can they do it one more time against a presumptive number one seed in the NCAA tournament and a Tar Heels team that has had a magnificent season to this point. Last night, a miracle. Michael O'Connell with a three at the buzzer to force overtime. And then in overtime, DJ Burns just flat out took over. Seven of his 19 in the extra frame and the pack ran away from Virginia. And they put another sticker up on the wall. They live to see another day here in Washington, D.C. This is the granddaddy of all conference tournaments. Oh! The World Pack has had a Cinderella story going on. We winning tonight, good feeling tonight, killing me this whole vibe with a smile. The job's not finished. We've all been locked in. It's just been a fun ride, so to go out with a championship would be huge. Cadeau ahead to Bangkok. Fans enjoying this one. We got an opportunity to be a champion. Oh. NC State wants to keep the magic going. Absolutely incredible. Just knowing that, like, this is do or die. A huge shot for R.J. Davis. I like that. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> do it again. <laughs> Whoa! An ACC championship is on the line. Welcome to ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This is the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price. Day after day, they keep coming back, they keep winning, and they're getting closer and closer to their ultimate goal. Can they win five games in five days, become ACC Tournament Champions, and of course, get an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament. It has been quite a story here in Washington for this group of NC State players. Now though, they take on an in-state rival, the top seed, and a team playing extremely well in the North Carolina Tar Heels. Hi everybody and welcome once again to Washington DC inside Capital One Arena. Dan Schulman and Jay Billis, so glad you're with us. One team looks like a one seed no matter what. One team's playing for an NCAA tournament berth, but also at the heart of it all, at the root of it all tonight, is a trophy, a banner, and the memory of a lifetime. Well, an ACC tournament championship is incredibly meaningful to players that have played in this league, and for both North Carolina State and North Carolina, that's the primary objective coming into this game is to be ACC tournament champions. And North Carolina won the regular season outright. They don't have to qualify it if they win this. Uh, what about some of the matchups tonight? There are players playing extremely well on both sides. Let's start in the backcourt. Well, you start with the backcourt. DJ Horn for North Carolina State has been outstanding. He had 20 points against North Carolina in the last game that these two teams played. And what can you say about R.J. Davis that hasn't been said? 18 points against Florida State, 25 against Pitt. He's the leading scorer in the ACC. But I think the matchup everybody's dying to see is Armando Baycott going up against D.J. Burns. Armando Baycott 
has been as good a big guy as there's been in the country all year long and really for the last four or five years. He has been spectacular in this tournament. Rebounding and his defense has been fantastic. Switching out onto guard, staying in front, and then challenging at the rim. Again, a switch out onto Bub Carrington and really putting good pressure on the shot. His defense has really been one of the engines that's made North Carolina go. And on the opposite side is DJ Burns. He had 19 points against Virginia. Seven of those points coming in the overtime period. He catches the ball off the lane and he will back you down like your dad playing against an eight-year-old in the driveway. It is like guarding a dump truck when it's backing into a parking space. What do you do? And he's, he's built like an offensive lineman. He's got the feet of a ballerina. He's really fun to watch. He generates a lot of attention. He is the starting point, the focal point of the state offense. Even though he can pass the ball beautifully, set up other guys, it all seems to start with a touch in the post. And these are two big, physical, talented guys who are going to, going to be going at it tonight. Armando Baycott's been in college for five years. He's never won this tournament. The last time Carolina won it was in 2016 in this building. The last time NC State won it was way back in 1987. How badly do Wolfpack fans want to win this game tonight, given the stakes, given who they're playing, given everything that's going on. For more on this matchup, let's say hello to Jess Sims. Hey team, so plot twist, NC State was not supposed to be at the ACC tournament this long, but in the off chance that they made it till Saturday, Coach Keats knew that it was going to take something extra special to keep his guys motivated. So an hour and a half before they left for DC, he told his guys to pack something that brings them good luck. So DJ Horn said he brought his boombox speaker to play music in the locker room. Michael O'Connell packed a gift from his mother. And Coach Keats brought some of his championship rings in hopes of adding another to his collection while being just the second team in NCAA history to win five games in five days. And guys, the only other team to do that was UConn in 2011, and they went on to win the national championship. Jess, thank you. Yeah, that was the Kemba Walker-led team that won five in five days in the Big East tournament. Kevin Keats did tell us he brought the rings with him for good luck. Didn't take them out of the bag. Hasn't shown them to the players. But it's enough to just have something with you. And he said if any of the players forgot to bring something, he would just say to them, well, tell me about something that brings you good luck. Let's just get that out of the open. Meanwhile, Hubert Davis, his third year as the head coach of the Tar Heels, the ACC Coach of the Year this season, 17-3 and three in conference play. And we've had a chance, Jay, to talk to him a lot over the course of the season. Boy, does he love the team that he has this year. I think he really respects the work ethic of this basketball team, individually and collectively. And I've said it before, this is an elite program with a blue collar attitude. And it goes from the last guy on the roster to the first. One change in the starting lineup for the Wolfpack. DJ Horn, who's been coming off the bench because of a hip flexor suffered last week, is back in the lineup. Jaden Taylor will not start, rolled his ankle last night. They are hoping that he can play. He did go through warm-up. Something to keep an eye on. DJ Burns guarding Armando Baycott. Baycott needs to go right at him. Put him in the position where he has to guard. Casey Morsell on R.J. Davis. Kevin Keats wants to put some size on Davis. And Morsell is that. Considerably bigger than Davis. Godot into the paint. Forces it up. No. And Mohamed Diara, who's been a rebounding machine in this tournament, comes down with the first one for State. Michael O'Connell, four of his five highest scoring games of the season have come in the last four days. Here's the double on Burns. They put the double on and took it off quickly just to stop the back down. Turnaround by Horn will drop through. Well, DJ Horn has to be a little happier to be playing in an up-tempo game. So difficult to go against Virginia, where he had eight points, but he was 0 of 5 from three. Wolfpack were down five, just over a minute to go. Virginia going to the free throw line. It looked like State was done. And then everything that could have gone wrong for Virginia did. The huge shot by O'Connell, and they just 
took care of business in the overtime, and that's why they are still here. Harrison Ingram with that tap out on the offensive rebound. I thought Elliott Cadeau had a chance to get it, but he didn't. Morsell fouled by Davis. So again, the status of Jaden Taylor unknown at this time. The left angle, he's got it taped up. He did go through warm-ups, but now he's sitting, got it wrapped up even more. This is a guy who averages better than 12 points per game. Don't know if he's going to play tonight. And he had 22 points against North Carolina in the last game between these two teams. Both he and DJ Horn were having their way with Carolina in the first half before they got shut down in the second. This is Taylor before the game. Uh, literally a game time decision and Kevin Keats has not been using that deep of a rotation and it's their fifth game in as many nights so obviously they would love to have the services of Taylor but if they don't they'll have to go a little bit deeper Breon Pass who got a few minutes last night Cam Woods who played earlier in the tournament Ingram unguarded this is the corner three and another rebound for the Wolfpack this time it's Morsell Casey Morsell had a really good game last night against Virginia. He's an excellent defender, but he needs to be a scorer in this game. At 25 in Tuesday's game against Louisville. We were talking to Kevin Keats earlier today. They've been here so long, played so many games. He was like, is it Friday or is it Saturday? As Burns turns it over. But what a ride NC State has been on. And just for people who may not know around other parts of the country, State's not going to the NCAA tournament unless they win this game tonight. So if they win it, not only do they get the automatic berth, they get the ACC tournament, the banner, the trophy, and the whole thing. Elliot Cadeau has had two very good games against North Carolina State, and his penetration is excellent. Right on cue. He's averaging 13 and a half points against the Wolfpack without having made a three in the two games they've played, but he's also averaging close to seven assists in those two games. I'm rounding up. <laughs> You're so generous. O'Connell open. Knocks down a three, and he continues to score at a much higher rate than he did during the regular season. He's a different player in this yeah. tournament. He's gone 16, 16, 12, and 12 in the four games coming into this one. And again, those are four of his five highest scoring games of the entire season. Davis doesn't need much space. This is the three and a more sell the rebound. O'Connell has made more three-point field goals in this tournament than he made the last 17 games combined. Davis got caught on Burns. Bay caught over to help. Horn open. And what a start for the pack. That's why you don't want to double at times. I mean, you've got to pick your poison. If you double DJ Burns, he's a really good passer out of that double. Ingram open for a three. Can't hit it. And so far, nothing doing on the offensive glass for Carolina. Always a big part of their game. Well, they're taking long shots, and those are longer rebounds. North Carolina needs to get a piece of that paint and go inside and play inside out. That's their game. Which is what State's doing now with Burns. No double here. Big fellas going at it, and Burns wins. And it's State by nine. Remember, NC State got out to a huge lead playing against North Carolina the last time. And then Carolina not locked them down in the second half. Yeah. When D.J. Burns gets the ball, he catches it off the lane, and he just backs his defender in there. It's one-on-one -on -one in the post, and there's not much, even as good of a defender as Armando Baycott is, there's not much you can do. You're given ground, otherwise you're going to get run over. First foul on Burns. Kevin Keats in this tournament has gotten some really good minutes, especially last night from Ben Middlebrooks as Baycott steps to the line. Burns getting about 21 minutes per game. Middlebrooks about 19. And I thought, Jay, that Middlebrooks playing so well last night, that's what allowed Burns to rest and maybe be so effective in the overtime. It, it, Middlebrooks was huge against Virginia. He had 12 points, six rebounds, and three steals in that game against the Cavaliers. And he made some really good defensive plays. He's a really good pick and roll defender. 11-4 Wolfpack. And again, a touch for Burns, getting bodied by Baycott. 
Boy, these are two guys who they don't shy away from the physical part of the game. The kick to Horn, it's short, and Baycott the rebound. Ingram running. Morcell comes up with it, though. A great job by NC State to get back and thwart that break. Diara for three. Yes! And State leads by 10. Boy, you couldn't have drawn it up any better if you're Kevin Keats. Spinning, Baycott lost it. It will stay with Carolina as we go to the first timeout of the night with the Wolfpack off to a great start. Maybe Kevin Keats will schedule five games in five days next season. Great pass out of the double team to Michael O'Connell. And he knocks down yet another three, another double team. He finds DJ Horn. That's one of the dangers when you double DJ Burns because he is a terrific passer. Mohamed Diara, who has dominated the glass, knocks down the three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price, invest with confidence, and in part by Grammarly, easier said, done. Last time State won the ACC Tournament Championship, Jim Valvano, 1987, Benny Del Negro, the most outstanding player. It was an eight-team league then. They were the sixth seed. Beat Duke in overtime in the quarters, beat Wake in double overtime in the semis, beat Carolina by one in the final. And look at the remarkable similarities, Jay, between the regular season in 87 and the regular season this year for the Pack. It's incredible. I mean, the numbers are almost identical. In 1987, the ACC was an eight-team league, so it was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. Baycott going to work on Middlebrooks, who's coming to replace Burns. Middlebrooks was really physical there, but at least Carolina got the ball inside the first time they've gotten a piece of the paint through Baycott. Horn defended by Cormac Ryan. The Aras hit a three in the early going. Now the kick to O'Connell. The floater off the rim and still loose and out of bounds to the Wolfpack. Mohamed Diara in fighting Armando Baycott. Really good shot fake by Michael O'Connell to open up that drive. And now Baycott is going to sit. Jalen Washington has checked in. Well, Carolina has more depth and they're going to use it. They want to send fresh bodies at NC State and wear down a team that they might think is already worn down a little bit, but they're not showing any signs of it right now. Yeah. Third game in as many days for the Heels, fifth game in as many days for the Wolfpack. Horn got Trimble in the air and then got blocked from behind by Withers. Davis the kick. Withers the drive. Off balance, it'll go. Well, Withers have made, has made a great contribution of late coming off the bench. Last three games, he's averaging over six and a half rebounds. DJ Horn is hot in the early going. He averages 16 and a half. He's got seven already tonight. Well, anybody thought that NC State was going to slow the tempo down. They're not. They're trying to get down the floor and get something early. Morcell went flying, and then R.J. Davis knocks down the jumper. Went right into his chest, then a step back move to the right corner. R.J. Davis is actually better from three than he is from two against NC State this year. Davis reached the 2,000 career point mark last night as he continues to climb up the Carolina charts. Middlebrooks, the reverse, can't get it to go, but Washington couldn't squeeze it, but it belongs to Carolina anyways. Davis again. O'Connell ahead to Diara. And Hubert Davis is all over one of the officials. Maybe they're hanging on the rim there by Middlebrooks or DR, but you can hang on the rim if there's somebody underneath you, if it's a safety thing, and they play on. Well, Lee Cassell was trying to warn DR, hey, don't hang on it that long afterwards, but I like the fact they didn't call it technical. 
Washington banks one home. And that gets Carolina back within seven. The more North Carolina gets the ball inside, the better it is for the Tar Heels. Horn off a screen. Floater. Oh boy, DJ Horn off to a great, great start tonight already with nine. His movement has been excellent. He was handcuffed in the game last night against Virginia. Not so, so far. Now he reaches in and commits the foul. And now we understand it was not Diara hanging on the rim. It was Kevin Keats being on the court that Hubert Davis was upset about. And then Hubert went on the court to say he was upset about <laughs> Kevin Keats being on the court. If you go on the court, I'm not moving. You do whatever you want. Well, some coaches do get a little too far out there and start playing <laughs> defense. Withers passed up the three. Could go in, so R.J. Davis has gone to the bench for the first time and an immediate Carolina turnover. Really good job by both D.J. Horn and Jaden Taylor there of playing off of both Cadeau and Trimble. You know, they're not playing him for the shot. They're playing him for the drive. So they were there to help. They took away the drive and recovered late, and that's what helped cause that turnover from Trimble. So let's see what Jaden Taylor can do. He has checked in with the bad left ankle, and the big fellas back too. D.J. Burns Jr., then Middlebrooks back to the bench. Eight minutes in, and the underdog with a nine-point lead. Good fade. And the battle resumes between Burns and Baycott. Soft touch, but it rolls off the rim. Good defense by Baycott. Good not to have his arms there so that could Bur Burns could go through them and try to draw that foul. Just put him straight up. So Cadeau and Trimble, the two guards, neither one of them really an outside shooter. Ryan's not in the game. Davis is not in the game. A different looking offensive lineup for the Heels. Cadeau. Burns wraps it up. I think North Carolina needs to start putting DJ Burns in some ball screens. Get him away from the basket. Get him moving. Morcel frees himself. Pretty good look. Rebound down to Withers. Boy, Trimble's been good in this tournament for the Heels, especially two nights ago against Florida State. And great defensively. Baycott with the jumper, his first field goal of the game. When he steps away, that puts D.J. Burns in a bad spot. If he goes out there, Baycock can drive around him. Burns comes out to get a touch. He can hit it, and he does. Not just the post guy, got a soft touch in the mid-range, too. Well, Casey Morcell just came up, almost set a ball screen on it. And that freed him up for that little short jumper. Ingram draws the double. Ingram gets it back and hits the three. Well, how about that passing? Around the horn twice to get it back to where the ball started yeah. and for a wide open jumper. He's really the only three point threat on the floor. Withers can, but hasn't taken him any this year. They got R.J. Davis ready to check into the next whistle. Diara, offensive foul. It's going to be that kind of a night here for the Washington. The heels in the pack for an ACC title. Well, it has been a treacherous week here in Champ Week. If you are a top seed, Purdue getting bounced by Wisconsin in the Big Ten semis. They still look like the one seed. Tennessee got knocked out in the quarters of the SEC tournament in Nashville. Arizona gone in the, the Pac-12 tournament. Colorado and Oregon will battle for a Pac-12 title. How about Houston? They scored 41 points against Iowa State today. 69-41 Cyclones who win the Big 12 tournament championship. Yeah, the only team that played well enough to win in their game was Purdue. They lost that one in overtime and had multiple chances to win that one.
Everybody else got run. And Tennessee got run. Duke got run in this event by NC State. So here Carolina, the one seed. They had a magnificent game against Florida State in the quarters. Beat them by 25. And then beat a very game and determined group of Pitt Panthers. 72-65 in the semis. The one thing that North Carolina has to deal with in this game. DJ Horn is having fun out there. I mean, he's got a smile on his face. He's the one guy who didn't play on Tuesday because of the hip flexor. They sat him out. They were playing Louisville. They were able to win without him. So for him, just his fourth and fourth four days. Jaden Taylor, bad ankle and all. A great cut from the weak side slot, and Burns found him. What a great pass by DJ Burns. So worried about him backing you down. You don't have your hands up. You just threw it right over Armando Baker. Jay, how about four assists? And we know he's a great passer. How about four assists already for Burns? But he couldn't keep up with Davis there. Well, Davis has extraordinary speed with the ball, not only in transition, but in the half court. He changes speeds incredibly well. Ryan trying to deny Horn. Now he's going to keep him to one side. And the foul on Ryan. First on Ryan, just the second on the team, only three on NC State. O'Connell returns as Breon Pass, who got a couple of minutes, sits down. And this first half looking a little bit like the first half at North Carolina between these two teams where D.J. Horn got off to such a quick start. That one rattles out. He's already got 11 in this one. Davis again being defended by Morsell. That's the matchup Coach Keats wants. Ryan no. O'Connell the rebound. And again, you're not seeing any crashing on the glass by the heels. In the first game between these two, they dominated on the offensive glass. Davis steps back and wow. hits it. How good is that? For a great help by NC State Michael O'Connell, but R.J. Davis just made a spectacular individual play. The Wolfpack have led by as many as 10. It's down to three. Morcell with a tough one on the baseline. Well, when Casey Morcell plays aggressively, NC State's a different team. Cadeau and Nguyen. This is what North Carolina wants to do. Get the ball down court quickly and attack in transition. Make NC State run. Horn turns the corner. Good help by Armando Baycott. How's it going in? to Burns. Instead, it'll be a baseline drive by Horn, left it short. Davis, another three, hits again! And Carolina's come back to tie it. More blue than red in the house here tonight, and they're getting noisy. It's out of bounds. Good effort by Cadeau, but it is still state ball as we go to a timeout. North Carolina showing some life and injecting that life is R.J. Davis. Great help by Michael O'Connell, but the great step back. And three, another step back in transition. Goes into the body of O'Connell. Splash, splash. Carolina and NC State tied. It's time to cut down some nets and claim some titles. Four championships all on one day. It's Championship Sunday. It starts at what Eastern time here on ESPN, and here are the matchups that are coming your way tomorrow. Florida and Auburn in the SEC Men's Tournament Championship, and then Temple and UAB. If you're a fan of a bubble team, that's bad news. South Florida got knocked out. Florida Atlantic got knocked out. That's a bit stealer situation right there. This is a bit stealer situation right here if NC State can win this. But Carolina has come back, Jay, 
from a 10-point deficit, and you're looking at the biggest reason why. R.J. Davis has just exploded. He's got 11 points. He's 3 of 5 from 3, and those last two he hit were big ones. Marcel well defended by Ryan. O'Connell misses the three. Baycott the rebound. And now Carolina looking for its first lead of the game. O'Connell just got a little pin in screen from DJ Burns. He was wide open for that three. Baycott coming out to sit a ball screen, it looks like. Now goes to the bucket, and Morcell reaches in and fouls him. That's why you want to put D.J. Burns in the ball screens. Morcell's got to come over and pick up that role, and he picked it up, reaching instead of putting his body in the way as the tag guy and just bumping Armando Baycott to stop his progress. But D.J. Burns has to stay with the ball, so Casey Morcell comes over from the weak side. There were two on the weak side for North Carolina. Ingram guarded by Diara. Good matchup here. Off the foot of Ingram. He dives to the floor to keep it and gets tied up by Mar Marcel. And the possession arrow will give that over to the Wolfpack. Taylor, who is just in for a little bit again, he'll sit and DJ Horn back in now for State. But just the fact that he can gut it out. He gutted it out last night against... Virginia after he injured that ankle. But NC State personified by Taylor giving everything they have in this tournament. McConnell trying to get something started finds Horn. The shot clock's inside 10. Crowd around DJ Burns. Now he'll take the 16-footer, short, DR with a tip. Davis runs it down for the heels. A touch for Baycott. Little shovel pass, Davis. Not this time, tip back out though. Tipped out by Cadeau. Davis driving on Diara, and will head to the free throw line. So good at getting past the defender, Diara. He had an advantage there, but put the brakes on just a little bit, so Diara had to go over his back to try to get that block shot and picked up the foul. 89% on the season from the line. We've been kind of updating you uh, here and there as he continues to climb up the scoring charts. Started the year at 48, started the tournament at 10 on Carolina's all-time list. Came into this game eight. And Jay, tonight he's passed the great Charlie Scott and has moved into seventh on Carolina's all-time scoring list. R.J. Davis has just had an incredible career capped off by this year where he's not only led the ACC in scoring, I think his leadership for this Carolina team has been exemplary on and off the floor. Carolina on top for the first time tonight. Taylor's coming right back in. Taylor was terrific in the last game against North Carolina. He had 22 points in that game. He and Horn combined for 42. Seven zero run Tar Heels. And four guards around DJ Burns right now for State. Boy, Burns looked like he lost it and almost kind of volleyball tapped it up into the bucket. His footwork is fantastic. It doesn't look like a guy that size should be able to move like he moves. Six points for Burns, tied at 30. But North Carolina has gone away from the double team. They're going to go one on one in the post. That's just a two. But if he's picking you apart for multiple threes, that's where the problem comes in. Davis, another step back three. Not this time, burns the rebound. Under four to go in the first half. Horn, another floater wow. and another basket. It's really up to Armando Baycott to step up there. He kept retreating toward the basket. Baycott walks into a jumper and ties the game. He's got six. Smart shot by Armando Baycott. Coming down is the trailer. D.J. Burns right in the middle of the lane. He wasn't going to get out there. You might as well take it because he can make that shot as he just proved. 
a good defense to stop that drive by R.J. Davis. Burns into the paint. Baycott shuts him down. Tremble helpful as he was coming by to reach in. Shot clock running down. Taylor slips. Burns for three. Oh, boy! His first three-pointer of the season. Is there anything he can't do out there? <laughs> And he had to take it, and he knew he had to take it, but he hit it. Burns started his career out at Tennessee and then transferred to Winthrop, where he played for Pat Kelsey, who's now the head coach of Charleston, headed back to the NCAA tournament for the second consecutive year. Trimble the runner, short, the follow, no, but a foul. How quick was Trimble to that second jump? D.J. Burns showing all of his skills, Jay, here tonight. The body of an offensive lineman, maybe two, and the footwork of a ballerina goes to that left hand inside, and then with the shot clock going down, he knocks down his first three of the year. Coach Keats, let me shoot more of those. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let our expertise round out yours. Well, off the top of the show, the first matchup we talked about was R.J. Davis and D.J. Horn. And it has certainly lived up to expectations. Well, D.J. Horn has 13 points in this first half. He's 6 of 10 from the field. His counterpart, R.J. Davis, 13 points. He's 3 of 6 from 3. But North Carolina State is shooting 58% in this first half. And I think Hubert Davis is going to be asking his team at halftime to make things more difficult on D.J. Horn and NC State. And one thing, Dan, North Carolina's only got two team fouls. It's not the only indication, but it's an indication that they're not getting as physical on the defensive end as Hubert Davis would like. 35-34. NC State here with two and a half to go in the first. Carolina's led this game for 15 seconds. That's it. State's led by as many as 10. A little horn set. Two at the elbows, two in the corners. Good help, but open is Burns, and he's got two more. 11 points and five assists for D.J. Burns tonight. Well, that was over help by Armando Baker. He can't stay on the ball that long. Carolina's scoring quickly in transition. They actually have, it's 12 to two in transition points for North Carolina. You know what else is different about this? Burns has played 15 out of 18 minutes. Usually he's kind of 10 to 12 and a half and Middlebrooks is like eight to 10. But Keats has been leaving Burns in there. He's been playing great tonight. Fifth game in as many nights for the Wolfpack as we've got another foul going against State. Well, he didn't complete the play, but smart move by Harrison Ingram to take that ball to the basket to draw that foul. And there's something going on with Armando Baycott, slowly and gingerly making his way back onto the court after the third foul on D.J. Horn. That's big. And it looked like Harrison Ingram knew exactly what he was doing, going right at D.J. Horn and putting him in a position to foul or to back off in transition. Harrison Ingram, two shots. Whatever it is, Baycott trying to walk it off. Harrison Ingram, the transfer from Stanford, who's had such a great year for Carolina. Horn will sit. And Ernest Ross is into the game for the first time. As again, due to foul trouble and trying to monitor Taylor's minutes, Kevin Keats's rotation, Jay, a little bit different here tonight. Yeah, different players are going to have to come in off the bench and provide quality minutes. This is Ross's first appearance in the tournament. Has not played in any of the previous four games. North Carolina going to go with some full court pressure. Try to ratchet things up on NC State. Trimble on O'Connell. Trimble is a great defender. 
Taylor with Davis on him. Now Burns with Baycott on him. Going to work again. And the foul called on Baycott. His first. The hard foul to get called on. You're kind of going, what do you want me to do here? You know, the offense is dislodging the defense. And, and the clear out. Here comes the double. Good recovery by North Carolina. Taylor, tough shot. Rebound Withers. Carolina looking for the lead. And for the most part, Carolina has limited NC State to one shot. Neither team's done much of anything in the offensive class. State's got one. Carolina's got two. Trimble open. Missed the three, and Morcell holding his ground well to get the rebound. NC State could have gone for a two-for-one there, but they just don't want to rush anything right now with D.J. Horn on the bench with those three fouls. And again, it's Burns. And again, the double. Good pass. And another assist for Burns. The bucket for Ross. And State backs off, is back on top. Ross just made a cut from the left side of the floor to the right and made himself available to an excellent passer, D.J. Burns. Coming up later tonight at 11.30 Eastern Time, to be specific, the Nothing But Net crew will have a complete breakdown of tonight's championship action. That comes your way post-game as a champion will be crowned here tonight inside Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. Will it be R.J. Davis and the Tar Heels? Will it be Michael O'Connell and the Wolfpack? How about Ernest Ross playing for the first time in the tournament? That basket that he just scored, Jay, that's his second field goal of the season. He had only played 46 minutes all year coming into this game tonight. You know, it came at the right time. He made a really good cut to make himself available to Burns. And Carolina, if they get a score here, can tie or take the lead. But the second half for North Carolina, I think Hubert Davis wants to see a different defensive team than he saw in the first. To go to Davis. Davis to Ryan. Gets it off and hit it. Cormac Ryan bangs home a three at the end of the first half, sending Carolina into the locker room with a one point lead. How about the shot fake by Cormac Ryan when he caught the ball in the left corner? Just let the defense fly, up, fly by very calmly. Knocks down the three to go up one. Jess Sims is with Kevin Keats. Coach, UNC made a big run and obviously just took the lead right now. What's going through your mind defensively? Well, it's a good, it's a game of runs. We started out really hot, made some shots early. They got going. We lost a couple guys. During that stretch, I thought RJ really got them going a little bit. But it's a great game. We've got to find um, shooters and we've got to sprint back in transition. Well, speaking about coming off hot, you are shooting over 50% from the field and from the three and have more than 11 assists. Assists. How are you feeling about the offensive and how do you keep the rhythm going? Well, I think we're doing very well offensively. We're moving the ball. We're getting out and playing. Our biggest problem is we're giving them easy baskets because I think they got about 10 to 12 points in transition. Offensively, we're moving the ball. We got great play and ball movement. Thank you so much, Coach. He's losing his voice, but what he said is true. It's a great game so far. Big shot at the end of the half for Carolina. Cormac Ryan getting free in the corner. Using the shot fake, getting the shot off. So it's the Tar Heels by one at halftime with an ACC Tournament Championship on the line tonight here in Washington. Let's go to Reese in the game. All right, Dan J. Williams, Seth Greenberg here. As you see, Kevin Keats before that, R.J. Davis headed to the locker room. That last three by Cormac Ryan to give the Tar Heels the lead might prove to be an omen. Teams leading at the half of the uh -oh. ACC championship game have won the last 12 times oh. they go to the winning. So North Carolina is up by a single. You know, as we watch the first half, we're right beside the NC State bench. I don't know what they said to R.J. Davis at one point that really irritated him, but they shouldn't have said it because he got going there for a while. I mean, sometimes you just don't want to wake a sleeping dog, right? And some of their guards on the bench are yapping. You're going to see right here, it makes a step back three. Now watch him turn and twist, and he starts yelling at the bench. 
And, and Seth, do you know this? At this turn and twist right here, you get a guy like that engaged. <laughs> Like, he has 13 points, four assists in this game. Now, NC State's done a great job. North Carolina, only three personal fouls. I do think they need to be more physical in the second half, starting on the defensive end. You don't want to go out of city guard. I keep telling you about that city guard things, but they got a little chip on their shoulder. Carolina responded like a champion. Having said that, NC State did everything they had to do in this first half to make this a game and have a chance to win in the second half. Number one, play through DJ Burns. Only the tempo of the game, you play through him. If you double him, he's a terrific passer. If you don't, he scores it. And then you see Burns right down here. His patience in the low post, his ability to move his man right, and score. Burns, patient, uses his body. You want to double at him? Good spacing right there. Good job of stepping into it, knocking down that three. Offensively, I thought that NC State was terrific. They also ran some little zoom action, which is kind of a pick down or a dribble handoff. They got a horn going there. And defensively, I thought that State really did a good job of shrieking off a of Cadeau, yeah. shrieking off a of Trimble, and giving a lot of help there. By the way, DJ Burns, six assists in the ball game. So a big making plays, just passing a great deliverer of the ball as well. Man, I tell you, O'Connell made one play. He was on the strong side with the ball, and he waited, timed it perfectly. Double team came, spread it to the weak side, open, boom, Bam. knocked down a three, and Burns found it beautiful. Game plan Both for DJs are yes, pretty man. good. The game yeah. plan for NC State has been absolutely terrific. They got to do a little bit better job in defensive transition, locating. Part of that is if you take it in too deep on those dribble handoffs. You have a hard time covering the backcourt, but NC State's in this basketball game. I don't care about five day, five games in five days. I don't care right about now, that right time. now. Let's right go now, time. it's about 20 minutes of everything and anything you have to try to get yourself a chance to play into. Burns played 16 of those 20 minutes in the first half. Let's see how that second half comes along. What's the most he played all season? I guarantee you he didn't play 60 minutes in any other half all <laughs> exactly. season. Exactly. This program, NC State, has won a couple of national championships. Jay Will pointed it out in the pregame. If they could win this, this would be one of the biggest wins in program history, certainly since that most recent national championship in 1983. They've got a chance to knock off North Carolina after eliminating Duke earlier. There are some one seeds who had some issues. Purdue had a tough break. No Arizona's gone down. UConn didn't have any problems, so we'll get you caught up in a bit. I'm changing it up. It's a new carry now. I'm Big 12 championship game, Houston number one seed, number one in the country, Iowa State was behind and then they weren't and they did not look back. Curtis Jones hits the three, what a performance in the Cyclones. Iowa State defend, rebound, share the basketball, make plays for each other. Only five points off turnovers for Houston and they struggled scoring. Osilovich right there, the Nikola Jokic of college basketball, baby. You see this big lead, it's going to wind up to be a 69-41 game. I point that out because this will be the worst loss ever by a one seed in their final game before the NCAA tournament. Worst loss ever, 28 points. One seed's have had trouble. UConn had a fight for a while against Marquette. Tristan Newton hit three threes. UConn just up by a bucket at the half. Pulled away in the second half. Klingon went for 22. And UConn had 21 assists on 26 made field goals. Are you kidding me? They just play differently. The ball moves, people move, they make the extra pass, they play with great spacing, they share the basketball, and whack-a-mole shows up again because Klingon now, he goes for 22 and 16 today. Number one overall seed. That's what you're looking at with the Connecticut Huskies. And that's what's going to happen. Joe Lenardi breaks all of this down. 73-57, UConn wins the Big East Tournament. How about Chucky Hepburn right at the end of regulation? Wisconsin ties up Purdue, and Boiler up went Boiler down because then Max Klesman yeah, rolled it in. Purdue had a last shot. It didn't go down, and now the Boilermakers are going to be one seed. They're not going to be Big Ten tournament champions. Not going to be Big Ten tournament champions, but they're going to stay in the right region in terms of being in the tournament. You know, they have a lot of tournament baggage to overcome. This might work out for them. I'm not a needs a loss guy, but you at least have another day, settle in, and get ready for what's next. Which Lawyer is needs to start making some shots. Less than 24 hours until the bracket is revealed. We'll have it for you as soon as it happens. 
on Sports Center and the rest of the night in bracketology. Just want to remind you the bubble has moved two spots down because New Mexico won the Mountain West and FAU lost in the Americans. So that's going to be a two bit league. And either UAB, led by Andy Kennedy, or Temple would get Coaches in. Coaches are throwing pillows at their TVs right now. They're on the bubble. There's no doubt about it. All right, about a second half. Here. Chance to win this game. NC State, I don't want to hear about being tired. Thank I don't want to hear about it. Thank you. DJ Burns, DJ Horn, it's time to go. Get on the horse and let's ride. I agree with you. Hey, give it your best. Leave it all on the floor. Second half's coming. There is a title on the line tonight here in Washington, D.C., North Carolina, and NC State. Battling it out. Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week presented by Principal. This is the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament presented by T. Rowe Price, the player of the year in the conference this year. R.J. Davis, 13 points, three threes, five assists, and no turnovers in the first half. D.J. Horn was great as well. Also 13 points, but of note, and you can see it right there, he's got three fouls, something to keep an eye on for the Wolfpack going into the second half. Welcome back, Dan Schulman and Jay Billis. Time now for tonight's expert moves brought to you by Principal. DJ Burns has some expert moves. Well, people think it's a, an easy decision whether to double DJ Burns in the post. It is not. He catches it so far off the lane that you have a longer distance to travel, and he is such a good passer. DJ Burns has six assists in this first half. And when you go double him, you're gonna have to rotate. Then you're playing four on three on the backside. A cut underneath by Ernest Ross gives you an easy bucket if you get caught ball watching. And DJ Burns has been fantastic. But North Carolina, Dan, their defense is usually the story. They allowed NC State to shoot 58% in that first half. I don't think they impacted the ball as much as they could defensively. I think Hubert Davis wants to see something different. Let's go to Jess Sims. Dan, Jay is spot on because I caught up with Coach Davis coming out of the locker room and he said, listen, shooting almost 59% is unacceptable. They don't feel us. There's no such thing as making adjustments because we're not even playing defense. They've been to the line just one time, so we need to make them feel us and get the physicality up. All right, Jess, thank you. Yeah, amazing uh, that State's only been to the line one for two, just two free throw attempts, and amazing how few offensive rebounds there have been in this game as well at either end. Cadeau, no. And Baycott just got called for a foul. That'll be number two on Armando Baycott. Well, Elliot Cadeau had that right-hand drive. Kept it in one hand, tried to loft it up the top of the backboard above the square. Just couldn't get it to go. How about Burns playing over 16 minutes in the first half? Baycott playing over 17. And they're going at it again. Boy, is he skilled. Yeah, he's big. But don't let that take away from the fact that he is extremely skilled as well. But North Carolina deciding to guard him one on one in the post because those are tough twos. They don't want him passing out for open threes. Oh, a steal by Baycott. Ingram, a corner three. Oh, and what a mistake there by State. An unforced error, a turnover that just hands three points to Carolina. Horn. Well defended by Cadeau, goes at him again and draws the foul. Good job on that second effort. Now watch this steal by Armando Baycott. Diara just a lazy pass trying to get it to Michael O'Connell. And Baycott takes it away. It leads to a wide open three and DJ Burns isn't going to be able to cover that distance to put any pressure on Harrison Ingram. And Burns going one on one in the post. He's got a fabulous touch. But I think Hubert Davis is willing to take that tough two, wear him out a little bit, rather than have him passing it around, getting open threes. Horn at the line for State. Late free throws on Thursday to seal the win over Duke and kind of lock down the victory in overtime against Virginia last night by making all four free throws that he had. Better than 18 points per game in conference play this year, fourth in the league. D.J. Horn guarding Cormac Ryan right now. I think North Carolina needs to go at him wherever they can. Make him guard. Playing with three. 
Cadeau driving again. Can't hit it again. DR with the rebound. And he went right into the body of Horn. Just couldn't draw the foul or complete the play. But the action was good and was smart. Baycott pushing Burns out almost to the three-point line. He gets where he wants to get, and he banks it home. What are you going to do? All for assistance. <laughs> Baycott at the other end is fouled by Burns, and that will be number two on him. And that's how you attack D.J. Burns. You know, one of the ways that you kind of defend against him is you make him guard on the other end. Put him in ball screen actions. Make him guard in the post. Put him in a position to foul. But Armando Baycott is a big, strong guy using his leverage, but Mohamed Diarra just steps in there, actually sets a little screen to pick him off and make it a little bit easier for D.J. Burns to get to that left hand. Baycott misses the first. He's shooting a career-best 78% from the line this year. Burns outscoring Baycott 15 to 8. Baycott out rebounding Burns. Look at the assist total. That's that's part of it as well. Some of those are probably for three. So between scoring and assists, at minimum, Burns has been involved in 27 points in this game. Well, he's touched the ball just about every time down. And rightfully so. He's making things happen. I wonder what he's going to do here, Dan. <laughs> Good pass. The kick to O'Connell. Contested baseline jumper, rebound Ingram. Nice recovery by R.J. Davis to take away that three. And they don't stop Davis in transition. He got a clean look. Doesn't miss many of those, does he? Here they go again. And he hits again. State by three. As Burns is kind of having his way right now with Baycott down on the block. Just extraordinary, that touch with that size. You know, this is what he did to Duke. He wound up with 27 points, but Duke played him one-on-one -on -one in the post to shut everybody else down. Burns goes down, they play on, and Baycott banks it home. Boy, these are two really good, really big, really physical guys battling in this game. You know, the mop guy is down at the other end. That's a pretty wide swap <laughs> he's having to deal with down there. Horn draws the foul. Well, DJ Burns, this is a back down, the likes of which you don't see very often. You know, he reminds me of Josh Smith played at UCLA then transferred to Georgetown. Same kind of player, and there's a little flop right there that led to the easy basket for Armando Baycott. Each guy's played big minutes. Each guy's got two fouls. And D.J. Horn getting ready to go to the free throw line for two. He's tying his shoes. I think he's just buying a little bit of time to get some rest. Smart. Five games in five days is right. extraordinary. Uh, I don't, it's, you can't understate, or overstate, excuse me, you can't overstate the difficulty of this for NC State, and yet they are giving maximum effort. It's really impressive to watch. And again, the only other school that has ever won five in five days to win a conference championship, the Kemba Walker-led UConn Huskies back in 2011. Even a little thing, like Carolina played at 7 o'clock last night. State played at 9.30. Plus, it's their fifth game in fifth five days. Davis trying to get free. Morcel trying to stay with him and doing a really good job. Look at this defense. Against one of the best offensive players in the country. And then a rejection. Horn. And a foul, but how about Casey Morsell's defense on R.J. Davis? Casey Morsell is the best on-ball defender on this NC State roster, and you saw why there. He started his career at Virginia, but staying in front of someone as quick as R.J. Davis, he made it look easy. It is not, and it was a multiple effort defensive exchange that finished up with a block shot that started transition that ultimately got D.J. Horn to the free throw line. What a great sequence for Casey Morsell.
Fifth year senior, two years at Virginia, three in Raleigh. Horn the miss and a couple of subs now for Carolina. Ryan sits with three. And this little chess match between Hubert Davis and Kevin Keats continues. Burns went out. Now Baycott goes out. Get him some rest in advance of the under 16 timeout as well. State by four. Harrison Ingram needs to get more involved on the offensive end, be more of a threat for North Carolina. Davis running around a couple of screens, got free for a moment. Morcell recovers beautifully. And good help by Ben Middlebrooks. And that is a block called on O'Connell. You can see where he's looking. He wants to see a replay. What's you think? Well, he's a primary defender there, and those are the charge calls that shouldn't have changed from last year, but seemingly they have. But the, the change in the charge block rule on secondary defenders not only was good, it was great. Ingram to the free throw line. Diara forced him into a tough shot and comes down with a rebound. Kind of one of the unsung heroes of this tournament for NC State is Mohamed Diara. Diara has been spectacular on the glass. Had a 16 rebound performance. Had a 14 and a 12, and he's got seven tonight. Morcell to turn around. And it's back to a six point advantage for the 10 seed. Where is this energy coming from for NC State? Davis steps in and buries it. Boy, you take a gamble, which Casey Morsell did, to shoot the gap, try to get a steal. And R.J. Davis burns it, but it was a two. He had to step inside the three-point line to get that shot. Casey Morsell, by the way, Jay, is the only player who has not come out of the game. Contact as he kind of swung his arms through. Looked like maybe an elbow got R.J. Davis, but they play on. Just a rip through. Washington tries to save it and does. Cadeau will try a three. State will give him that. The bodies are flying yeah. in this game. And Taylor went flying. Diara took a shot to the head. He's grimacing as O'Connell walks it into the front court. R.J. Davis still guarding Casey Morcell. Morcell is bigger, a little bit stronger. Middlebrooks, not an outside shooter. Now Taylor. O'Connell to step in. Draws the foul. All made by the shot fake that got Cadeau off balance and opened up the middle. How about the impact Casey Morcell is having on this game? And it's been on both ends of the floor. A little turnaround jumper, and that is not an easy shot. That's over the left shoulder. To start it out, and R.J. Davis, after Morcell takes a gamble for a steal, R.J. Davis burns him with two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal. Let our expertise round out yours. Well, one of the great, great high school basketball programs in this or any other area. The Matha Catholic at Hyattsville, Maryland. Derek Wittenberg, Sidney Lowe, both members of the 1983 National Championship team. If State wins, they're in the NCAA tournament, obviously. They win this championship for the first time since 1987. They would become the first double-digit seed to win an ACC tournament championship and just the second program ever to win five games in five days to win a conference tournament. It is remarkable what they have done since Tuesday. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Boy, Sidney Lowe and Derek Wittenberg, that was a pretty good high school back car. What yeah. they played for the great Morgan yeah. Wooten at DeMatha. One of two and a five-point lead for the Wolfpack. Carolina needs to get the ball inside more often. 
They do right there to go with a nifty feed into Baycott. With a little side pick and roll, two on the ball, and Baycott was wide open. But Carolina shot a lot of threes in this game. And some guys that have been taking them are not the shooters you would expect. R.J. Davis on the bench right now for the Tar Heels. D.J. Horn and D.J. Burns both on the bench for the Wolfpack. Baycott down with a rebound. That's his eighth. Really good defense there by Seth Trimble. He is one heck of a defender. Can switch out on just about anybody. Godot, nice look. Trimble passes up the three and lost it. Diara finds it. O'Connell takes it. Whoa. First Godot went flying, then Middlebrooks went flying. I think the call is going against the Wolfpack. We'll wait for the signal from Bill Covington. Mohamed Diara of NC State, the foul, his third. Meanwhile, look who's back. So far, Burns tonight, 8 of 10 from the field, 17 points and 6 assists. Trying to put D.J. Barnes in some ball screen situations. Godot goes the other way, finds Trimble. Misses the three, Baycott the rebound. Trying to go back up with it, he lost it. And we've got a held ball. The possession arrow will give it back to the pack. Really good defense by NC State to converge on the ball all around Armando Baycott to knock it away. And Seth Trimble, that shot from the right corner, that's not the shot that North Carolina wants. It was a pressured three from a guy who can make open ones, but he's only made ten threes on the season. R.J. Davis returns. You saw Middlebrooks come in for State, but it's not for Burns. D.R. has got three. So for the first time tonight, we see Middlebrooks and Burns on the floor together. And guess who gets a touch? A foul on Baycott, his third. You just can't bring your arm down there. It's hard to keep yourself from doing it, but you just have to stay straight up when he goes up with it and try to bother it. But once that right arm comes down, automatic foul. And that's already 16 fouls on Carolina here in the second half as Burns goes to the line. First time tonight, 68% on the season. And the problem Carolina has is Baycott's really the only matchup they have for D.J. Burns. We're not going to put Jalen Washington on him. There's just a strength difference. I mean, you might be able to put Jalen Withers on him, and he might be able to try by getting low with leverage. But Baycott is the natural matchup for D.J. Burns. And if it's anybody other than Baycott, it's almost an automatic double, right? You have to? Well, if you double, then you put yourself in a position. Middlebrook's pushed off on Jalen Withers. But you put yourself in the position of, of him hurting you as a pass. Yep, yep. And it's a pick your poison. Right? Exactly. Yeah. It, it sounds like it's such an easy decision. Of course, go double him. But you go double D.J. Burns. He's such a good passer that he can find a guy like D.J. Horn or you know, Jaden Taylor, somebody, Michael O'Connell, and all of a sudden, NC State's getting open threes. You're trading two for three. Horn on the floor with three. Baycott on the floor with three. And a whistle away from the ball, and a foul on the Wolfpack. And Bill Covington is bringing D.J. Horn and Cormac Ryan together. Is this on Horn? It should be. I mean, he, he sort of grabbed... He grabbed Cormac Ryan as he's trying to come off a screen that was being set by R.J. Davis along the baseline. I mean, that's a foul. And it is on Horn, and it's his fourth. And that is a major loss for the Wolfpack. There's no question about the call. So they will be without their leading score for a while. Diara returns. Middlebrook sits as well. I wonder what the officials wanted to talk to those 
two guys about. If you're telling Cormac Ryan, don't cut. Ryan just went down. He's hurt. And Michael O'Connell was the closest defender looking around saying I didn't I didn't do anything here looking up at the scoreboard but Ryan still shaken up and may have hit his head on the court. We will have to get a look at a replay. He was the inbounder and then came in to be able to go off one screen or another. He's being guarded by O'Connell. Like whatever look like, it was was before he hit the court. Yeah, it didn't look like there was any sort of ankle issue. They will take the media timeout now as Ryan continues to get medical attention. We'll be back. We will cap off Champ Week tomorrow. Two more games on ESPN and the app. The SEC title game, the Gators and the Tigers, and then Temple and UAB. Somebody who wasn't going is going the way that that is turning out. And then we got you covered in the evening. Selection Sunday, 6 Eastern Sports Center with the Reese and the guys. The men's field at 68. Bracketology, then the women's selection special at 8 o'clock. Watch Ryan trying to get around O'Connell and just runs into his shoulder. And that's where, you, as you can see, the injury happened. No foul on the play. Ryan on the bench. Looks much better than he did just a few minutes ago. Hopefully he's okay. And back to the action. Yeah, that's called floppy action. He could choose which side to come off of, off of baseline screens. And O'Connell was trying to send him out to the right. But Ryan wanted to go to the left, and that's when he caught his shoulder. Morcel into Burns. And Baycott's got those three fouls. Burns up and in, does it again. He ultimately wants to get to that right shoulder, and you have to bring a gang to stop him from getting there. I mean, Baycott's a member of the conference all defensive team. He's a very big, strong guy and a very good defender, and DJ Burns is 9 for 11 tonight. But if he's going to back you all the way down there, there's nobody that can do anything about that. And now a turnover. And this is the decision. Do you bring a double to get the ball out of his hands? But when he's such a good passer, he can hurt you that way as well and maybe hurt you more. They confronting him for a moment. They can't get him the ball, so Marcel will drive it, chase it down. Viara over to help. Boy, are they trapped down in that corner, though. It'll stay with State, 4.9 on the shot clock. And Mohamed Diara saved that possession by making himself available to Morsell. Boy, Burns playing the game with a smile on his face, too. He is having the time of his life this week. Morsell for three. Davis the rebound for the Tar Heels. Back from Cadeau. And Davis lays it in. That is Carolina basketball. And how beautiful was that? The give and go. And another creative finish around the basket for R.J. Davis. Wolf pack by four. Everybody in the building knows what's coming. Short this time. Baycott did a great job not letting them get too close to the bucket. Davis draws the foul. He had Baycott to his left, running the floor, and DJ Burns trying to keep up. Now this is the previous one where RJ Davis gives it up, gets it right back, and goes right around the NC State defense. Just a beautiful finish to avoid the block shot by Diara. And now Davis, Carolina's all-time leader in free throw percentage, is at the line for two. <laughs> Middlebrooks in for Burns, and Cormac Ryan has returned for Carolina. And 
and you have to think when North Carolina's in the half court, they want to go into Armando Baycott. One of two for Davis. DJ Horn is coming back in with four fouls. Boy, does he have to be careful. He just has to be smart. I'm guessing they try to keep him as far away from R.J. Davis as they can on the defensive end. O'Connell pulls up and hits. Wow. R.J. Davis went underneath that screen by Ben Middlebrooks, and Michael O'Connell made him pay. O'Connell's been a different player in this tournament than he was all year long. Double figures in the first four. Davis, no. Great rebound by Ingram. Ingram for three. Diara runs it down and saves it. Well, a lot of three-point shots for North Carolina. Baycott never touched her. Past the midway point of the second half, and the underdog, the 10 seed with a five-point lead on the top seed in Carolina. Horn short. Out of bounds to the Tar Heels. Uh, Michael O'Connell. Now watch R.J. Davis go underneath. He actually got picked off, but tried to gap that ball screen. And Michael O'Connell made him pay with that extra space to knock down that three. He has been fantastic in this ACC tournament. And as you just saw on your screen, Kevin Keats, Jay, he's already starting to play offense defense with D.J. Horn. He grabbed him on the way by and said, don't go too far. Sit in that first seat. If we get the ball back, you're going back in. And they got the ball back. Offensive foul on Jalen Washington and Horns right back into the game. A little too aggressive on that screen. The free up Cormac Ryan just leaned in to Jaden Taylor and got called. Different game with no Baycott and no Burns right now. NC State playing five out. Horn sizing up Ryan. And hits wow. it. What a big shot. And he's got a huge smile on his face. How much fun are these state players having this week? Carolina needs to put him in some action. Go right at DJ Horn. Davis from the corner with the answer. It's a long two for Carolina. And when he needs space, he just creates it for himself with that step back. Great separation. Morcel to give and go. O'Connell has it taken away by Cadeau. That steal saved a layup. Now Davis to slow, slow it down and set something up. Crossover. Floater. Yes. Got the switch. Michael O'Connell came out to get him. He just crossed over and went right by for the little floater. R.J. Davis has taken over Carolina's offensive possessions. But D.J. Horn, offense, defense, substitutions. The offense is working. And then on the other end, the step back, that was a three. Mm. Initially counted as a two. Here's the floater. How much fun is this game? The NC State Wolfpack, the 10 seed playing on their fifth consecutive night, taking on the top seed, the North Carolina Tar Heels in what has been a whale of a basketball game. So far, they're playing for a trophy, playing for a championship, playing for a banner, and eight minutes away from finding out who it is. Horn's got 21, Burns 20. R.J. Davis now 23. They changed the two to a three. Armando Baycott. 13 and 9.
So you give Carolina the extra point after the review. It's now a three-point game, 61-58, pack. Carolina bringing full court pressure. Got the initial trap, and now NC State breaks it. And a great bounce pass, but Diara missed the reverse. Got it back and puts it in. Well, it looked like he got fouled as well. But that's 10 rebounds now for Muhammad Diara. Well, he has been a machine. Just cleaning the glass throughout this entire tournament. Cadeau gets inside, a little bit short. And Burns gathers it in for the Wolfpack. North Carolina's offense has been out of sync in the half court. And to give credit to NC State's defense. Horn again playing with four fouls. 21 points tonight for State. Takes a bump and hits! What a sensational game he is having. Well, they were icing that side action. And DJ Horn just gets all the way to the bucket and finishes. Yara first goes to the other side of the basket but gets his own rebound. I thought he got fouled there but still puts it in. And DJ Horn just getting between defenders, splitting them and picking up that foul. Never took his eyes off the rim. Now take a look at Casey Morsell right here at the top of your screen. As DJ Horn finishes this play, Casey Morsell looks to me like he's cramping up there and who could blame him after five games in five days, but he had to leave the floor to go into the hallway. And that looks suspiciously like a cramp. And he is still there. So at the moment, they're without Morsell. Taylor's in the game with a bad ankle. Horn's in the game with four fouls. Yet NC State is up by eight. Can they just find enough bodies to play the last seven minutes at the level they will need to to win this game? He needs to take O'Connell down in the post. Harrison Ingram's got O'Connell on him. Give it to him and let him back him down. Taylor on Davis. Now Ingram is doing that. There's the help from Diara to swat it out of bounds. Carolina ball with five on the shot clock. Boy, what terrific help defense by Muhammad Diara. Right under the basket, comes over, gets vertical, and knocks the ball away with his left hand. Big time. Again, State not only playing for an ACC tournament championship, they need to win this game to get into the NCAA tournament, one would assume. Baycott banks it in to make it a six-point game. And here comes Morsell jogging back to the bench. Well, a good play by Carolina. They got R.J. Davis on the run, and then Armando Baycott could face up and just take D.J. Burns off the dribble. Horn fouled by Ingram. That's already 19 fouls on Carolina, so it's one and one for Horn. And any further fouls will be two. Just ran a little Iverson screen over those two screeners at the elbows. And there was a, an open lane to the basket with a rip through for a left-handed drive. And Ingram just reached in and fouled. So you've seen a lot of state. You had them a couple of weeks ago in a regular season game. Why are they playing at this level now? They lost their last four coming into the tournament. Why are they playing at such a high level right now? Well, remember who they played. Yes. Remember they had a Saturday at North Carolina, and then they had to turn around and play Duke on a Monday. Then they had Pittsburgh and at Pittsburgh. They had a really difficult schedule in a very short time frame. But they're just in a great rhythm now. And they've got some momentum going, beating Louisville and Syracuse, and then that big upset of Duke. And then Virginia in overtime last night. Another teardrop for R.J. Davis. It's a five-point game. But North Carolina has to make a defensive stand. And you have to think that NC State wants to go inside to D.J. Burns. Let him go against Withers. Folks starting to stand in the building, wearing both blue and red. What a pass. Diara gathers, blocked from behind by Baycott. Oh, a good recovery by Baycott. Tried to help out on Burns, and Burns made a great pass, but negated. 
Tipped away and stolen. Taylor. Kiara runs it down. This is where NC State, and you can tell Kevin Keats thought his team was losing their poise a little bit, just wants to calm them down. 5.23 to go, State by five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by T. Rowe Price. Invest with confidence. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Jess Sims, the ACC Tournament Championship Game. NC State trying to win a title for the first time since 1987. If it's Carolina, it would be the first time since 2016. Really important for NC State to get good shots down the stretch. You take good shots, North Carolina less likely to be able to get out in transition where they're extraordinarily dangerous. And Jay Casey Morsell back on the floor for the Wolfpack. That gives NC State their best individual defender on the perimeter back on the floor. Stagger action to try to get it to Horn. Ingram on him. And Horn is saying, oh, get out of here, DJ. Horn wanted to take Ingram, but instead it's into Burns. He's doubled. There goes the double. There's the open three. And Morcel hits it. And it's state by eight. And that's the reason that doubling is so difficult on DJ Burns. Davis rejected by Diara. And Horn is going to slow it down. Morcel, not this time. And that was not the shot. Even though he was open. Make North Carolina guard. Baycott one on one with Burns. The spin, the bank, the tip. And Diara's got it again. How many times has Mohamed Diara come up with the ball on the defensive glass? He has made so many big plays in this game, not just on the glass, but blocking shots has helped defense looking at the officials. Say, hey, man, I got hit in the head there. Does that not count? Nearing the four-minute mark. Horn is fouled. This is truly remarkable. Fifth game in as many days. The 10 seed dealing with guys who aren't physically 100% and they just keep playing. You have to think they're operating on fumes right now. Fumes and emotion and just straight up want to. But a terrific job by DJ Horn of refusing that ball screen going baseline, drawing the foul. And he's a terrific free throw shooter right about 80%. With every opportunity that NC State gets to steal a moment, you got the massage gun. Wow. Yeah, you leak yourself say, yeah. hey, look, I know he needs it, but he can't do that. Being told it's a groin issue for Casey Morcell. And he is coming out right now. And now Middlebrook's getting ready to come in. And again, this feels like with the four under four timeout coming soon, you get DJ Burns a decent amount of rest here. As much as you can. They're going to need days of rest after this. Made them both. And it's back to a 10 point lead, matching their biggest lead of the night. Does Carolina have an answer? Baycott going to work on Middlebrooks. And a foul. As Baycott will be heading to the line when we come back. But how about the gutsy performance that continues here for the guys in red? Well, Mohamed Yara at 16 rebounds against Duke, 12 rebounds against Virginia. And double figure rebounds again in this one. Taking a shot afterwards, and Casey Morcell. After the double team on Burns, they threw it around the horn. And Casey Morcell injured, cutting it out, just like this entire NC State team.
Just a great week of basketball here in Washington, D.C. The NC State Wolfpack had to play on Tuesday as the 10 seed. And they made it all the way to Saturday against the top seed from Chapel Hill. Back and forth they've gone, but the Wolfpack have led most of the night and trying to pull off an incredibly improbable championship here tonight. These two schools, second and third all time in ACC Tournament Championships. Duke leads with 22, Carolina 18, State 10, but as we've said on a few occasions, none since 1987. They are up 10 with 3.51 to go. And Dan, you have to think that if Armando Baycott makes this, Carolina is going to come with full court pressure. They've got to do something to change the rhythm of this game. And they've started to double team DJ Burns. That has not worked out particularly well, but I think they have to bring the pressure full court. Here it comes. Horn to O'Connell. And they get it over. Is he going to back them down from that far out? Good pass into Horn, who lays it in. Assist number seven tonight for Burns. What a fabulous cut by DJ Horn. What an incredible week both of them have had. Burns and Horn. Here's Diara. And it stays with State. And Kevin Keats is probably saying something like, take your time. Just a great cut from the weak side. Just a step and go all the way to the rim. Harrison Ingram couldn't block it. Boy, and you're worried about DJ Horn coming off for a handoff, and he just cut the other way. Just a beautiful cut and a great read. Carolina came all the way back, had the lead briefly here in the second half, and now State's up 11, but a steal by Davis to get it down to nine, under three to go, and Hubert Davis wants the full court pressure. Boy, that's old school. The trap by North Carolina shooting the gap as an interceptor. It's still inbounds, but Carolina's got it now. Davis. Ingram. Ryan for three. And who else but Diara with a rebound. And NC State dodged one there. Boy, and if you're Kevin Keats, you just want to see poise and good decision-making right now. Back to Horn. He'll take a three. And it's out of bounds as Horn and Cadeau got tangled up. And DJ Horn is still down. Seems to be all right. It's Carolina ball with 2.16 to go. Taylor sits. Horn is staying in the game. He's been playing a long time with four fouls. Morcell has come back in. And once again, he's on R.J. Davis. Right now, it's about just staying in front. No threes and no fouls. Ingram the step in. Cadeau won't take the three. Davis the pull up. And a battle for the ball between Davis and Morcell. And it's getting heated as the officials get in and try to break it up. There's two guys fighting for the ball. And if it's just a held ball, it will stay with Carolina on the possession arrow. Good job by Lee Cassell and Bert Smith, Bill Covington all getting in there quickly. Now Jay Burns has gone to the bench right now for State. Middlebrooks is in. Two minutes to go. Davis gets a clean look. And it is North Carolina ball, says Bert Smith. And we're under two minutes, so they can check it. D.J. Horn has been everywhere. 
He covered a long distance to go after that ball. The play will be under official review to determine possession. The call on the floor was possession to North Carolina. No, sir. That's wow. The call is Carolina's when Ingram made that last desperate reach for it. Did he touch it? Doesn't look like he did, but there's there's not enough there to overturn it. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it, it kind of rolled off the hand. And we saw from the other angle that it didn't look like from that angle that Ingram touched it, but I don't see how there's anything there to overturn the call. Doesn't look like it, but I agree with you 100%. Just not enough there to overturn it. And again, the initial call is Carolina's. And Bert Smith, and I think this is great. I mean, he took an extra beat, an extra pause before making the signal. Wanted to make sure that he called it the right way because the call on the floor can be obviously huge here. If there's not enough to overturn it, however it's called is however it stays. And it's Carolina ball. Well, in review, the call on the floor is confirmed. Possession to North Carolina. So they're down nine. They've got the ball with a minute 51 to go. Ingram to inbound. Screen for the screener action, well defended to keep it away from R.J. Davis. Baycott's going to drive it, and he is fouled by Middlebrooks. Number three on him, one and one coming for Baycott. Right now, NC State's got to be thinking about inbounding the ball, being strong with it and breaking pressure as Carolina's coming with it full court. A reminder, Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN, and oh boy, will they be talking about this one, no matter how it ends. Two big makes for Baycott. O'Connell turned it over. Davis for three. Got it back. Now Ryan is wide open in the corner. And Diara another rebound and a foul. Boy, Carolina gets the turnover off the bad pass. From Michael O'Connell get a wide open three from R.J. Davis just couldn't knock it down. What a momentum play that would have been. And Jay, I believe they are going to go to the monitor to see if there was anything flagrant on the foul. Yeah, it looked like it was Cadeau on the foul. You can see Cadeau kind of trying to swing. He was trying to tap the ball back out. But he got a big piece of Diara. Yeah, it would be really. It was a. It was a pretty wild swing. But I, I think that's what he was trying to do: is knock it back out. But it, since there may have been contact around the head, oftentimes that'll result in a, an F1. Let's we'll see what the officials' their judgment is. It's going to stay as a common foul. So it is two free throws for Diara, who has not been to the line tonight. 
He has 13 rebounds now in this game. He is a 62% free throw shooter on the season. Makes the first, Burns out, Middlebrooks back in. So they want Middlebrooks on defense right now and Burns on offense. Make or miss, North Carolina wants to get the ball down court quickly. Just get a score. It doesn't have to be a three. Two huge makes from Mohamed Diara. A good help there by Middlebrooks. That forced him further out on the floor. Davis reverses direction. Missed it. O'Connell the rebound and a foul. What a big rebound by Michael O'Connell. And NC State can feel it. Something that has never happened in this league. Five games in five successive days. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. They appeared to be down and out last night against Virginia in the last minute and a half of regulation. Somehow found a way. Miracle Mike found yeah, the way. That's right. The guy at the free throw line banked home a three to force overtime as the Hall of Famer Roy Williams looks on here in Washington. Two more. It's an 11 point lead. Ryan got fouled and will shoot three and DJ Horns out of the game. That's his fifth. And can Morcell come back? They're running out of bodies. Well, I know Horn didn't want to foul here. Just got a piece of his arm, just couldn't help himself. And he's going to have to take a seat. But I'll bet you sitting down is going to feel good after, <laughs> after all this play. And it does not look like Casey Morcell is able to play. Breon Pass, a junior from Reedsville, North Carolina, is going to come into the game. What this, I know we've said it a dozen times. What they've done this week has been remarkable. There just aren't enough platitudes. Yep. So they're without Horn, they're without Morcell. What, what do you think Kevin Keats is saying to DJ Horn right now? Hey, next time we play five games in five days and you have four fouls, don't yeah. reach in at the end. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, would you? Remind me to talk to you about something tomorrow. <laughs> Three for Ryan. They beat Louisville by nine. They beat Syracuse by 18. Beat Duke 74-69 in the quarterfinals Thursday night. The overtime win over Virginia. And now a minute 11 away. Up by nine. One more free throw for Cormac Ryan. And right now it's about inbounding the ball cleanly. Ooh, dangerous pass and O'Connell gets fouled and he's going back to the free throw line. Yeah, Brian pass with that dangerous pass but got away with it. North Carolina foul, charge number 50 by Harrison Ingram. His second personal foul. Two free throws the rest of the way for State. Passes in his third year in the program. It's his 82nd game. He's never started a game. Generally, he plays a handful of minutes here and there. He actually played a lot against Louisville, but part of that was D.J. Horn didn't play. So he got 22 minutes against Louisville, but he is in for a big minute and eight right now, to say the least. And they just keep making their free throws. Well, that's how you salt away a, a win and win a championship. It's that close. Ingram for three. Tipped out to Davis. He'll take a three. And Diara with yet another rebound, and he's fouled again. And now everybody wearing red in this arena can really feel it. 
There are more Carolina fans here than state fans. But it's the folks in red having the best time right now. And they should. What an effort by North Carolina State. And not just tonight, but this entire week. And Dan, you know, assuming they hang on this last 54 seconds, who do you give MVP to? There's so many deserving candidates. Yeah. One of them's right here at the foul line. The R has been huge. You could give it to Horn. You could give it to Burns. Ryan has to hoist. Davis the rebound, and he draws the foul. You know, it's the last thing you want to do there is foul and stop the clock. Carolina in all likelihood, I mean, I, I don't even think I have to say it on all likelihood. They're a one seed, win or lose tonight, right? Don't you think? No question. Yeah. But none of the guys on that bench have ever won an ACC tournament championship. He's won three. Hubert Davis, two as a player, one as an assistant coach. They came in this week really talking about wanting this title. Not wanting a one seed. They wanted this title. But like four other programs this week, they have run into a, a team that is just on an unbelievable roll right now in the book pack. It felt like a... A destiny's darlings type of thing and the shot last night by Michael O'Connell miracle Mike boy a turnover here for NC State has stepped out of bounds thought he got bumped out of bounds he might have but you got to be strong at this point in the game you're not going to be given anything this last minute and a half probably feels like an eternity for Kevin Keats Well, you don't want to foul there. Pass no, called for the foul. He just jumped right into the body, got tangled up with the arms of R.J. Davis. He wants to take away that three, but you just lock and trail and run him off the three-point line. If he gets a layup, who cares? And Davis, of course, almost automatic at the line. It's just the idea of stopping the clock and extending the game. That's his second miss tonight. Five of seven. Still a nine point game. And a turnover. The R is saying to O'Connell, come back, come back to me. The R couldn't get it to him and he threw it away. Well, even if he doesn't come back to the ball, take the 10 second violation yeah. rather than throw it away like that. At least more time comes off the clock that way. Here's Davis. Now Cadeau. Now Ingram for three. Middlebrook swats it out of bounds, and the call is NC State ball, but they're going to have a look at it. With 29.9 seconds to go. It looked like it went off Middlebrook's. That's one of those tricky ones. I mean, Middlebrooks caused it to go out of bounds, but it did graze the finger well, for Akon on the way out. For 38 minutes of the game, that's off Middlebrooks. But that's sort of the difficulty of replay. They say it you know, rolled off his finger, and they have confirmed the call. It'll stay with State. Any guard for North Carolina State that catches the ball should not give it up to a big guy in the backcourt. You know, when Michael O'Connell catches the ball, he can't give it to Mohamed Diarra. Yeah. Keep it. Just stand there and let them foul you, right? That's one thing, but you know, you don't want to give it to a big guy, and then all of a sudden you got to get open again. Oh, 
into pass. Back to Taylor. A few more seconds come off the clock, and now Jaden Taylor will head to the line. Indianapolis native, transfer from Butler. Going on a bum wheel. Boy, he's really gutted it out, hasn't he? Yeah, everybody has, but especially Jaden Taylor. Yeah. They've got a guy with a bad ankle. They've got a guy with a sore groin. They've got a guy who fouled out. They've got a guy who hit his first three of the season tonight. And they got a guy who scored only his second bucket of the entire season tonight. It's just crazy, everything that's gone on. And yet, they are 25 seconds away from a championship. You're rounding down now? It's I'm rounding down. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We've had real rounding issues this week, America. <laughs> Davis. Can't get it to go. Middlebrook's the rebound. They'll foul him. And now I think they can finally relax. It's been 37 years since this program won the ACC Tournament Championship. And they knew coming into this week that they had to win this tournament to go to the NCAA Tournament. There would be no at large. And Kevin Keats obviously feels a little more relaxed. Here come the walk-ons, including his son, KJ Keats. Well, this is a, an ACC tournament championship that will never be forgotten. Historic. Knocked out of bounds. Still Carolina ball. 8.2 to go. Coaches, you better let those guys sleep in tomorrow. <laughs> They have had an unbelievable week. Ingram for three. And that is going to do it. A remarkable, astounding week for the North Carolina State Wolfpack. And let the celebration begin in Raleigh. They earned every bit of this. And each guy, each shot we show, Jay, tells a different story. Each guy contributed in a different way, and it was enough to take home a trophy. The combination of elation and exhaustion in what had to be an exhausting week, but one that none of us will ever forget. Just extraordinary. Yep. DJ Burton said it a couple of nights ago, quote, we're not ready to go home just yet. And he wasn't kidding. And now they're going dancing, too. Dejection for the Tar Heels. But they know what's ahead for them. Likely is a one seed. They've got the NCAA tournament to look forward to. But they won't be the only team who played here tonight going to the big dance. The Wolfpack will join them. Just a great week of basketball. Uh, the city of Washington putting on a great show. Our outstanding crew here at ESPN, Eric Mosley, Mike Roig, and everybody else doing such a wonderful job uh, bringing some great pictures and stories to life here over the last five days. Five days ago, who could have imagined this? Amazing. Let's go to Jess Sims, who's with DJ Horn. DJ! <laughs> DJ, it has been 37 years. Talk to me about these tears right now. Man, I'm at a loss for words right now. You know, I, I came home with a with a mission, man, and to just see this right now, all the confetti all over the place, red and white, man. This for the city, man. This, this for 919, man. I love my brothers. 
I couldn't play in the first game because I was hurt and they got it done for me and gave me the opportunity to make this happen. And I wouldn't be here right now, man, if it weren't for them, man. So I just want to say, man, shout out Wolfpack Nation, man. The job not done. And like I said from the jump, man, why not us? You've been saying that since day one. You were smiling fresh as if you guys didn't already play four games before today. You are going to the NCAA tournament. How do you feel about that? I can't even put it in the words right now, man. Just a week ago, it was looking like our season was about to be over. And here we are now, man, on top of the world. We're about to go cut down the nets, something I've never done before in my life. And I just can't wait to celebrate this with my brothers, man. Go enjoy it. You deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. You can hear the emotion from Horn, a Raleigh native, two years at Illinois State, two years at Arizona State. He came home. Why not us? So look at tonight's dynamic play of the game brought to you by T. Rowe Price. And DJ Horn J was certainly dynamic this week. So many dynamic plays by DJ Horn. He set the tone out of the gate. DJ Burns with his play in the post, both backing down defenders and finding his teammates, one of whom was DJ Horn for those seven assists, just to, and Casey Marcel with his defense and timely scoring. Just a, a truly remarkable accomplishment to win the ACC Tournament champion, Championship for North Carolina State. I have never seen anything quite like this. How much fun is Selection Sunday going to be for these guys tomorrow? And again, they have earned every single bit of it. A lot of emotion, as you said. Emotion, elation, exhaustion, the whole thing after the Wolfpack win five games in five days, including taking out Duke and Carolina here in this tournament. Kevin Keats and company, the celebration is on. A great week of basketball here in Washington. As the Wolfpack beat the Tar Heels tonight, again, ACC Network will have the trophy celebration. So flip over there to get that. The Wolfpack will find out their fate, where they're going, who they're playing tomorrow on Selection Sunday. Tonight, they are the ACC champions. After becoming the first team in a conference history to win five games in five days, just the second team ever to do it. Let's go to Sports Center. makes history. They take down the top seed, North Carolina. An emotional moment for DJ Horn, Kevin Keats, and this entire Wolfpack crew. Their 11th ACC tournament title, but the first in 37 years. What a moment it is for these guys to stand on this court as they have punched their ticket to the NCAA tournament. The confetti is falling. I'm here with a whole cast and crew of guys that know what it feels like to stand in that confetti. Our Hall of Famer, Jim Beheim, Joel Berry II, Carlos Boozer, Luke Hancock. Luke, you played for Coach Keats. Take me through the emotion we're seeing from these guys in this historic run. It is just so special. There's been a lot of ups and downs this season for this team. Didn't start out great, had a rough patch to end the regular season. But Coach Keats, what a, a coaching clinic. And you see the joy in his face. You see the confetti coming down. I know Boozer's upset. He won three of them and didn't get all that confetti. But I'm just so happy for him. The first team to win five games in five days. I love it for these guys. I, I'm just listen. I'm, I'm shocked to be honest. I mean, I shouldn't be because we picked them to be our dark horse. But what a job they did defensively on the other guys. Obviously, they did a, a phenomenal job on the on the role players. The stars showed up for them. They rebounded the ball. They they hit 55% from the floor. They took care of the ball. They made their threes. Shot almost 42% from three. Did a good job of closing out this. Really happy for this team. I'm telling y'all. They are going to win some games in the NCAA tournament, and the country is going to fall in love with D.J. Burns. Yeah, I thought this was a very impressive game by NC State. They came out from the jump, and they were ready. Yeah. And I love what D.J. Horn said. He said, why not us? Why not us? And they knew what was on the line. They knew that they wanted to come in here, and they, they wanted to go to the NCAA tournament. And they stepped up tonight, and I love what he talked about his teammates. He wasn't there. And just think about the times that we were hurt yeah, yeah. and we weren't able to compete with our teammates. Yeah. 
He stayed with it. His other teammates stepped up. They got a chance to continue to move on. And now they're the ACC champions. That's what it's about. They wanted it the most tonight. So there's no doubt about it. They felt they did not feel tired one second tonight. And Burns probably played the most he's played all year long. <laughs> and he was there the whole game. Carolina's big two, if they're going forward in the tournament, they got to get some other people that step up yeah. and score and play, do some other things. To you your know? point, Coach, the Stars showed up, yeah. but the others for NC State did more. Like, you think about what Mo Diawara did, another double-double, first guy to do it, uh, 10 rebounds in four straight games in the ACC. Kel told me that. Shout out to Kel. Jay told me that. Jake in the building. <laughs> I, I just feel like they've done so many things in this tournament that no other team has done. You know, the, we knew, it's not always we get it really right. Well, we got this one right. Yeah. We said the, the guys that are studs, RJ and Armando had to play well, who was going to show up? The DJ Horn and DJ Burns had to play well, who else was going to show up? The confidence that you got. Coach, you've mentioned this a few times. When DJ Horn was out that first game, it ended up being a great thing for NC State because O'Connell stepped up in that Morsell. first game, because Taylor stepped up in that first game, because yeah. Casey Morsell stepped up. And I got to tell you what, watching that game, you see what five games in five days did to this team. How many guys were limping? How many guys were holding Bend hamstrings, over. cramps, <laughs> bumps, bruises? Kevin Keats got tackled over there on the sideline. He's going to have one of those. Just a, a incredible week. You saw Casey Morsell having to go because he was cramping up, but came right back in, battled through that adversity, and now you see the entire team on the stage celebrating oh Jess God, Sims right now with the team. It is my absolute oh. honor and privilege to be on this stage with ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips and tonight's winning team the North Carolina State Wolfpack, baby! It is now time for Commissioner Phillips to present the 2024 ACC Men's Basketball Trophy to the Wolfpack, led by head coach Kevin Keats. But you've been with this team through thick and thin, better or for worse. It's anything but magic. What is it like coaching these guys? You know, um, I'm, I'm very emotional right now. Um, because I got, a, I got a group of guys, man, that has fought their butt off. Um, I love these kids. Uh, all the glory goes to God for putting us in this situation. Uh, what a great group of kids. Uh, did a tremendous job. Winning five games in five days is a miracle. Uh, that says a lot about these guys. And uh, go Wolfpack. Why not us? Coach. I hey, why not us? Why not us? You stole, you stole that. I was going to say. Yes. Why not us? Why not us? NCAA tournament, what's next for you in this program? You know, um, like, like I said, it's, the guys in the locker room has believed from day one that we could win this. When we recruited guys, they believed from day one we can do this. You know, we got to get back. We played five straight games. Never happened in the history of ACC. Came out on top. Um, we beat five programs that have won national championships in the 2000s. Uh, really proud of our guys. We got to get back. We got to get some rest. And guess what? We going to the NCAA tournament, baby!
Player Award of the 2024 ACC, oh, you're not going anywhere, ACC Men's Basketball Tournament. Can I get a drum roll, please? It could go to so many different one of these guys. The MVP, based on his outstanding performance this entire week, goes to DJ Burns Jr. Yes, for DJ. DJ, the big guy with the soft touch. Congratulations. How can you even begin to put into words what this award and what winning this game tonight means to you? To be honest, I can't yet. It still doesn't feel real, but it'll hit me eventually, for sure. And how does it feel to have your guys, the team that's been with you through it all, chanting, hyping you up as you receive this trophy? We knew what we were capable of. We knew what we came here to do. Nobody believed in us, but we did. And you see what's happening now. Yeah. <laughs> five games, five days, NCAA tournament. What do you want to say to your fans? All this red, this big sea of red that came out to support y'all. Uh, I'm going to keep it real simple. Thank you to the ones who've been consistent throughout the ride, and welcome back everybody else. Congratulations again, DJ. <laughs> oh man, how about that? DJ Burns <laughs> comes out and absolutely puts up numbers tonight through this whole tournament and then leaves us with the zinger. Saying to the fans, thank you to the ones that have been with us. And welcome back, Boost, to everybody else. I love it, man. Boost. That's, a bar. that's a bar right there. You're letting them know, like, look, we appreciate everybody that stuck with us, and we appreciate the ones that jumped off and back on the bandwagon. Y'all, yeah. that moment right there for a lot of teams, you already know you're in. But for a team like this that was not going to make the tournament without winning this, Joel, what's that got to be like right now? That's special right there. That when you're a kid and you're watching college basketball, we, you dream of that. You dream of being able to go to the NCAA tournament and give yourself a chance to win a national championship. All of us up here wanted to win a national championship, and I'm sure the guys on NC State wanted to do the same thing. And then think about the guys who transferred into the program. Yeah. This is what you come here for. You come here to win championships like this. And NC State, man, one hell of a game tonight. And to do it five days in a row, that's just, that's incredible. Coach, we've talked about how it's historic. We talked about how nobody in the ACC had ever even played five and five, much less one five and five. The only team that has ever, since 1939, when we had the NCAA tournament, done it was UConn, had done it one time, and they went on to win a national championship. From a coach's perspective, how special is what Coach Keats was able to do with this group? Well, five days ago, they were not anywhere. They weren't going anywhere. They weren't going to the NIT five days ago. And now they're in the NCAA tournament. And they beat everybody they beat. Louisville played the best game they played all year. Oh, yeah. Syracuse had beaten them twice. Yep. I mean, Virginia in the miracle shot last night and then this game. I mean, you have to give this team and the coach an unbelievable amount of credit. They've just been spectacular. Coach, I asked Joel what it's like for the players, but for Coach Keats, watching his guys punch their ticket when they didn't have any other shot, what's that like as you're the coach getting to see your guys celebrate? Well, first of all, Coach Keats has done a great job since he's been there, but this year there was a lot of talk, a lot of, a lot of talk about the coach, and they're not making the progress like every coach in the country if you're not in the tournament you're on the hot seat but he answered all that and his team did the answering for him they were well coached they moved the ball they played defense they rebound 
Look at the stats tonight. The field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage, held their own on the boards. Not many turnovers until the end. I mean, they did everything, and they did it in the fifth game. You cannot give them enough credit for what they've done here tonight. And I know you guys are all really high on what we saw from this guy right here, Luke, to be able to come back from that hip injury, DJ Horn, and then really continue to motivate this team. They built around him even when he wasn't there and got better. Yeah, what an absolute gamer. And they're, listen, they're chanting his name. <laughs> DJ Horn, DJ Horn. <laughs> Hey, get the documentary ready. <laughs> We're going to be watching these guys for a long time. You know, DJ Horn, elite teams, they have one of those guards that has to go find you a bucket in the big moments. It's going to step up when your back's against the wall and just find a way. I think of coaches' teams. I think of Joe Barry making big shots left and right. I think of Russ Smith when I was playing. you got to have an X factor like DJ Horn. And he was so efficient. I mean, 29 points on 15 shots. That's wow. So efficient. Did a little bit of everything. Coach, you mentioned it, had to play great defense. They had a plan on the offensive end. I thought what Kevin Keats did in terms of his rotation, subbing these guys, trying to keep the mileage off a guy like DJ Burns, it looked like, or it felt like to me, that they threw the ball to him every possession. But the way he was subbing with trying to work the TV timeouts in to give that guy just a few more minutes on the bench, and then the strategy down the stretch outside of that last 30 seconds or so of game clock where the yeah. game was already done. What an elite coaching job. It was so much fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, just great job. I, I agree with you guys exactly what you said. Great coaching job, great chess match, adjustments throughout the game, great game plan from the very beginning. I thought DJ Horn was so aggressive early. DJ Burns so aggressive early, fought through the double team. They made big shots. Other guys stepped up. I can't give enough credit to this guy, O'Connell. I mean, he made play after play, stepped up. I mean, just think about that team. shot to, to send it to overtime. Yeah, oh, my right. God. I mean, just the whole tournament. I just, I feel like everybody had to make a play, and they made the plays. And this guy, Mo Diara, wow. kept getting Mo. My man, Mo Diara. Hey, congratulations, man. brother. That's stuff. Congratulations, man. Way to work in there, big fella. Congratulations. Congratulations, man. Absolutely. As Congrats. you can probably hear, we got two of the stars with us man. right now. The guys, congratulations. We got not one of the stars named DJ, but both of the stars named DJ. They can't hear us. You're going to have to talk really loud. <laughs> DJ, you got the hardware. You got to go up there and cut down the nets. You look around and you see all red. Can you describe the feeling? Oh, man, it's an amazing feeling. Unlike anything I felt, I've been to two championships for my for my conference, and it has never felt like this. Which night has been best, man? You guys win against Duke. It was an incredible game. You beat the one, the two, the three seed. You turn around and have that huge shot by O'Connell in the Virginia game, and then you got to anticipate there's going to be a big party tonight. What's been the best moment of this tournament so far? Is it right now? I would say getting through it with my brothers. Yes. Yeah. Had every opportunity to, to give up. I came in this morning, legs hurting, fifth day in a row. Yeah. Could have gave up easily, but I saw those guys turned up, and I knew I had to fight through it. We did. Love so we, we knew you two guys were going to show up like you had the whole tournament. Obviously, you guys got busy out there like you normally do. Talk about the other guys around you and how much they helped you guys win this championship. Uh, yeah, man, they were big, man. The whole team was, you know, this was a team effort, man. We wouldn't be here if it was just one person. There was no iron team. So uh, we came into this tournament, like I said, it's connected as I ever seen this team. And, you know, we got the job done, man. We are 24, 2024 ACC champions. Man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, what I got to say is I love the song Go DJ. That's my DJ. DJ. Go DJ. That's my DJ. Yes, sir, <laughs> Congratulations, fellas. I want to talk about y'all, the, the transfer portal, coming from Winthrop, coming from Arizona State. Is this what y'all dream of doing? Is this what it's about? Yeah, man, at least for me, I'll speak first. Individually, man, coming back home to my hometown and bringing back some hardware, man, it don't get no better than that, man. The job's not done, but we definitely going to celebrate this one back in Raleigh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one thing that I think is not just what you did here, but what you can do down the road. You've got a lot of basketball left I agree. in you this year, a lot. The way you're playing, there's nobody in the country you can't beat because you just beat the number one seed going into the tournament until 
you beat him tonight. Do you guys do you guys feel that way? How motivated are you because of that run that coach is talking about? Honestly, we've been motivated, but this this definitely just gave it a big boost. This just took us, you know, right over the top to where we need to be. I think that everybody will be a little more focused now, and we're going to get the job done. Guys, go I ahead, go think, ahead. man, that nobody probably expected us to do this. So now that we're here, man, that's all the confidence we need in the world, man. Love you know, it. there's no better time to be playing your best basketball than March. So we're here. Get those yeah. dancing <laughs> shoes ready. Guys, I played for Kevin Keats. I know he can be really hard on you sometimes, but man, does he push you to be your best. Just tell me about his impact on your team and even down the stretch. I know he's tough on you at times. Just tell me what he means to you, how he coaches you, what he brings out of you. A uh, special shout out to him, man. Yeah. Nobody's been talked about, talked down on as much as him this year. And for him to just stay resilient, he always kept his head up. Yeah. He never let us see him down if he was down. And that's all you can ask for from a coach like him. And you see the results that he's going to get out of us. He knows how to push us, and that's exactly what he does. Love it. Yeah, man, Keith's been my guy from day one. When I stepped on campus, man, he made me feel comfortable, made me feel back at home. So uh, the fact that, we you know, we came out here and did this for him, uh, you know, it means everything, man. And uh, just knowing that I could be able to pick up the phone and call him whenever and just know that we built this bond, that's, that's what it really means. And I played for him back in the prep school days, and he still answers my call. How about that? <laughs> I think he needs a little more respect, if you ask me. Uh, hey, yes, sir. <laughs> he just got it tonight. Yeah. Got a lot of it tonight. <laughs> hey, there are going to be documentaries written about you guys going five in five days, fellas. Never done before. I need a 30 for 30. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, guys, 30 for 30. you guys keep playing like this and you keep winning. And I'm sure they're already thinking about what they will write. And you're holding that, that up and you're looking at it. I saw you yeah. when you were off camera. What does that, that mean to you? That piece of net, what will you do with it? What does it represent? This means everything. Like I said, man, this is why I came home. Uh, you know, this is my first time coming oh, out of this. So this is coming up for off. me. <laughs> this, yeah. Yeah. Congrats, coach. Congrats, coach. Congrats. So, yeah, man, this is just everything, man. Uh, I, I can't even really put it into words. I'm speechless right now. Well, there is a lot to still be said, your coach. Before we let them go, coach, we're going to get you on the other side of the break. You want to say anything about your DJs? Man, these guys are great. Like, I'm telling you, I'm going to figure out how to get another year from both of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> new portal. New portal. <laughs> oh, guys, we got to let them go. They've got to do other media. Coach Keats, you hang tight. We're going to take to him in just a second on the other side of the break. As you see, we've got both DJ Horn and our MVP, DJ Burns, here with us now. Coach Keats. Keats going to be with us on the other side of the break. Stick around as NC State is going to the NCAA tournament. They won their 11th ACC tournament title. Welcome back into Nothing But Net. What a scene it is here for Coach Kevin Keats and the NC State Wolfpack, the 11th ACC tournament title for NC State, the first in 37 years. And that was the moment that just happened a few seconds ago as Coach Keats is down the ladder, sitting here with us now with the big smile on your face, looking around, taking this all in. Coach, when people talk about this run that you guys were on, being the first to win five in five days in ACC tournament history, if they say how, how do you answer that? Well, well, first, I, I will say this. Um, I got to thank God for putting us in this situation. Um, you know, during this run, we leaned on our faith a little bit. Um, today was a very emotional day for me all day long because you don't get these opportunities all, uh, every time. And um, those guys in the locker room, they believe. You could see after every game, we started getting a little stronger. And it's weird because we beat five teams that have won a national championship <laughs> in the 2000s, which are really good programs. Yeah. Coach, we talked a few weeks ago. You made a comment to me. I don't know if you remember, but you said, we're the team nobody is talking about. What told you this team can make a run? You know, you know, we <laughs> look. We lost a couple of really good players, yeah. and um, when we went through the league, we saw a bunch of good teams, and our league's very good. And we felt like that on any given night, you can beat any team, but you also can get beat. Um, but I, I will say this about our team: we're older, we're mature, 
uh, we handled it the right way. A couple of these teams, Syracuse, Carolina, they beat us a couple of times. And what we talked about coming to the tournament is making adjustments to become better, clean up the things we didn't do in the regular season. But what I, Coach, what I saw, when, you, when Horn went down a little bit, now all of a sudden O'Connell gets in there. All of a sudden there's more responsibility for other guys. And they just picked it up. Because, I mean, the Louisville game, Louisville played the best game I've seen them play in yeah. two years. And, you know, you get through that. And now Horn comes back and starts to – but those other guys kept playing. And your, your difference, what I see, is all those other guys. I mean, Burns, you know, Horn, they're going to do their stuff most of the nights. Yeah. But all those other guys – that's what impresses me. You know, it was um, coaches, and you know this, the one thing we never were able to get in the regular season is have all of those guys play well on the same yeah, night. Right. You know, DJ Horn would have a great night, yeah. then Jaden Taylor, yeah. Casey Morsell, and then, um, you know, DJ Burns. In this tournament, the first four games, we had a different leading score, yeah. and everybody played well together. And yeah. um, I tell you what, man, I love these guys. Like, it's weird because even though we played uh, five games, I felt like we got stronger in the second half right. in every single game. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can play tomorrow and win. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. You don't we're, have not, to. Hey, we're not going. We're going to get our ice cream. Yeah. We're going to figure out how to get back to Raleigh. I don't even know how we're getting back to Raleigh because <laughs> the play, the, the folks at the plane told us if we wasn't there by 12:30, we got to leave tomorrow. And we don't have no plane. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we're going to get back and enjoy this. Um, you know, uh, our, our, the families of uh, my wife, um, my coach's wife. Life. You know, everybody, man, it's just so special. It's more than just the, you know, just the players in the program. It's everybody that's involved. Um, our fans showed up. Yeah. Um, they understand it was a great atmosphere. Uh, we beat a very good Carolina team. But when you're the coach and you know going in how people are talking, well, they should have done a little better this year. They could have done better. And then you can do this. Yeah. That's an unbelievable feeling because I've been there. I know yeah. what that feeling yeah. is like. <laughs> coach, it's a, it's a great feeling. Um, and we took one game at a time. Yeah, we said, you know, we did the same. We had the same loop. We had the same routine every day. I ate at the same place every day. Uh, we were just, we just hung in there. And I, I'm proud of these kids. Yeah, coach, talk to me about the two DJs, man. DJ Horn was fantastic yeah. at, at coming off of a hip injury. DJ Burns was incredible overtime against Virginia. Carried it on yeah. again today. Talk to me about your two DJs. You know, you can't. I, I've told, I've said this for a couple years. DJ Burns may be the best back court, I mean, uh, back to the basket post guy Easy. in the country. He's incredible. Um, he's skilled. He can pass the ball. Knows how to play. I think one day he'll be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> <laughs> he got some good footwork, yeah. coach. And when we lost to Quavion Smith and Jaquel yeah. Jordan, I had to go out and find someone in the portal that I thought could replace one of them, not both of them. And DJ Horn is just a natural scorer. Yeah. I mean, he's a young man that started off in mid-major, went to Arizona State, and now he's playing at the highest level, doing a great job. The portal can help you as much as hurt you. And I think in your team, it really helped you with these guys. Say that again, Coach. The portal can really help yes. you. And with your team, it's a great example of you finding the right guys that fit because you can't just get anybody. You got to get the right guys, yeah. and you got the right guys. Well, um, guys, 37 years. Yeah. You know, all I heard when I got here is <laughs> you deliver a championship. And I made a strong promise when I first got here. I, Kevin Keats I made, is a winner. I right? made the mistake of saying <laughs> Kevin Keats is a winner. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a winner today. Right. <laughs> there you go, Coach. There you go, Coach. Yes, yes, hey, I'll tell you this. Everybody who knows Kevin Keats knows he's a winner. You talk about your family. I know my mom's at home right now probably crying yeah. because she loves this guy. Everybody who plays for him loves this guy. Man, we're so proud of you, Coach. Well, I'm proud of you guys. Thanks for having me, and um, thanks for covering our team. This has been great. This is wonderful. I mean, I couldn't have never imagined anything when you see that confetti and it's red and white <laughs> and it's dropping out of here. That's pretty, pretty cool. The good news is yet. you get to keep covering your team. Y'all can win some games in the tournament. Well, y'all not I'm, done yet. Hey, not I'll celebrate this, now. though. Hey, let's celebrate this. Hey, coach knows this. I'm going to celebrate this. Yes. 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 <laughs> Figure out that plane tomorrow. we got yeah. things to do right now. Coach yeah. Keats, congratulations. Congrats, Incredible yeah. run. We've had such a good time covering it. I cannot wait to see what you guys do in the NCAA tournament. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's get to the highlight and show you how it all went down. Their fifth game in five days, but these guys look like they are playing fresh and brand new. Came out locked in and ready to win this ACC tournament. 17 minutes to go. The big guy, DJ Burns, double. 
But DJ Horn is wide open. He knocks down the three. They jump out to an early lead. Then this time, Luke, it's Horn to burn. The guy is just so clutch. I love what Kevin Keith said. Just a natural score, a certified bucket getter. You got to watch out for the ACC Player of the Year, RJ Davis, North Carolina. Down three, then Joel, it's Davis again. RJ Davis started getting on. He started getting aggressive when he saw the opportunity. He tried to will his team to a win, but it just wasn't enough against this NC State, NC State team. How about this? What? First three of this season <laughs> as the shot clock is widening down for DJ Burns. He nails it. Carolina had an answer on the other end with Cormac Ryan. North Carolina heads into the locker room up by one, but then this big guy matchup coach in the middle. You just can't guard the guy with one guy, and if you double him, he's passing to a great shooter, and they're, they're going to beat you that way. Yeah, just dominant. I thought DJ Burns was terrific the entire tournament. But here comes DJ Horn with the step back three. Knocks it down. NC State leads by eight. And then Luke Moore from Horn. Yeah, just the way he attacked the basket. So strong, so efficient. Kind of picking and choosing his spots. Just an incredible game. They built up a nine-point lead. Horn goes in again for another one. The Wolfpack win it 84 to 76. The final. Kevin Keats and NC State going dancing in the NCAA tournament. He mentioned first title for this team in 37 years. It'll be their 29th NCAA tournament appearance. The first time they have been back to back in the tournament since 2013 2015 when they went back to back those years meanwhile more from Jess Sims after the game with DJ Horn it has been 37 years talk to me about these tears right now man I'm at a loss for words right now you know I, I came home with a with a mission man and to just see this right now all the confetti all over the place red and white man this for the city man this this for 919 man I love my brothers I couldn't play in the first game because I was hurt and they got it done for me and gave me the opportunity to make this happen and I wouldn't be here right now man but one for them man so I just want to say man shout out Wolfpack Nation man the job not done and like I said from the jump man why not us You've been saying that since day one. You were smiling fresh as if you guys didn't already play four games before today. You are going to the NCAA tournament. How do you feel about that? I can't even put it into words right now, man. Just a week ago, it was looking like our season was about to be over. And here we are now, man, on top of the world. We're about to go cut down the nets, something I've never done before in my life. And I just can't wait to celebrate this with my brothers, man. Go enjoy it. You deserve it. Congratulations. Thank you. You see the Why Not Us shirts from the crowd and you see the tournament titles as NC State now has their 11th ACC tournament title. But Joel, I want to talk about the emotion that we just saw there from DJ Horn. Obviously, couldn't play in that first game because of his hip and was limited some in the early ones. But to see that type of raw emotion from him and what this means, I mean, where's, where do you feel like that's coming from? Well, like I was talking with Luke and, and, and Booz, when you're hurt, it, it means it, it, it hurts being able to to sit out and not be able to get out there with your guys and compete and this guy i'm pretty sure he was still hurting you know but he put that aside because it was about something bigger when we won the national championship my ankles were hurting every single day but i put that aside because i realized that there was something bigger to the story and that's what it was for dj horn you took he talked about being transferring, uh, being at a mid-major, then transferring to Arizona State, and then coming here. That's what he came here for. Yep. And he said that Keats believed in him. That's his guy. And so when you look at him in that interview, that's the raw emotion. Being able to just go through this time with your teammates and your brothers, them stepping up and, 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 and helping you out, and then he comes back and he does it for his teammates. That's what it's about, Kels. It's really special to see that type of emotion and really special to see the run from this team. But Luke, you see the Why Not Us shirts, you hear Coach Keats, they're not done yet. What can this team do with the way they're playing now in the NCAA Kills, tournament? Can on, they, they, make they, a, they can make a run. Yeah, we didn't even miss this. <laughs> when you pick NC State to win it all, I mean. On, no. I have my red on, I got the top. Oh, Miss Keats is talking to you. Hey, Mama Keats. Mama congratulations, Keats. Mama Keats. Congratulations. congratulations. We're so excited for you. So excited. We'll see Congratulations. You, you know, this, this team is unique. 
they have a big guy in the middle who has these these ballerina feet. I mean, he's got footwork that's absolutely incredible. They got an absolute bucket in DJ Horn. It's one of those veteran guards you have to have to be able to make a run. And then they got the other pieces to the puzzle. I've been screaming Mo Diara's name for five straight yeah. days. An absolute stat sheet stuffer. He defends. He rebounds. He makes shots. And he, all these guys just elevated their performance. And if they keep that confidence, I mean, I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm not saying DJ Horn is Kimba Walker, but we could be seeing these guys on March Madness specials for years and years and years because they have the confidence right now to be able to make a run. And playing your best basketball right now is the most important thing. Far enough. See, see so, that's my thing, Kels. I think they can make a deep run because they're playing their best now. They believe it. They think about it. They beat Duke. They beat Virginia. They beat Carolina. They beat the one, two, and three seed in this tournament. Just tournament a team. fifth team to ever take Come down on. the one, two, and three seeds. That's impressive. In the that's SEC why, that's why I think they can make a deep run because they're playing their best basketball. They got an inside bucket getter in, in DJ uh, Burns. Like you said, an outside bucket getter in DJ Horn. They got a shooter in O'Connell. They got a Mr. Do Everything in there, Mo Diara. What do you want me to do, Mo? Because he can do it. <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you one of the hardest things now the ba NCAA basketball committee. Where Woo. are they going to seed NC State? Yeah. You yeah. don't want to be a two seed and Hell no. have to play them right away. I'll tell they're you a, They're a matchup nightmare. <laughs> you see the moment of more celebration <laughs> as they go back, finally off the court and get that moment where they punch their ticket to the they deserve NCAA it. tournament and officially say they are the ACC champs. We're talking about all the pieces and all the guys that have stepped up, but how about also, as I take this out of my ear, because I, I can't hear anything else other than their celebration, they're so excited. Michael O'Connell, another game where he scores in double figures tonight, Joel. To have that piece of the puzzle now playing well consistently. Not that he wasn't playing well, but he said, now it's my turn to step up and shoot. Right, and the thing about him is he got in and he just did what he what he's supposed to do. It wasn't anything sexy. It wasn't jumping off of the, the stat sheet. But when the big moments were there, he knocked down big time shots. Think about the times in the games where NC State's offense got stagnant. And then who stepped up and hit a big time shot? Michael O'Connell. And when you talk about a transfer porter, Coach Keith said, I went out and I got veteran guys. He talked about DJ Horn, but he didn't talk about Michael O'Connell. He's been around. He's been around the block, as they say. Yep. And he understands being in big moments. So for him being able to step up in those times where NC State needs him, that's what it's about. And that's why we've been talking about this team doing it by committee. And Michael O'Connell is one of those pieces. This is what it's about, too, Coach. Look, they got the goggles on. We're ready. We're inside the locker room right now. A place that I've never been with this kind of celebration is happening. But uh, DJ Burns now trading in those glasses, the sunglasses, for goggles. I think that's a, I think that's a trade that he'll take. How about you? That's a good trade. Uh, that is a good trade. I mean, things are changing. We didn't quite have the champagne bottles popping off in the locker room back in my day. But, uh, <laughs> I am really excited for those guys. This is just what an amazing moment. I love they're working on the dance moves now. Get them shoes ready. Well, I think what Joel said, you got to go back over. Michael is the point guard. The right. other guys are not point guards on this team. When he was not playing, they weren't sure what they were doing, mm -hmm. what Taylor's doing, what Marcel's doing, yep. you know, what Horns doing. They're all shooters. They're all scorers. He stabilized the whole team, and he still scores a little bit too. Mm -hmm. And they, by the way, they wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for that that three point shot right there. Yeah, where over the there. a little like Virginia esque with their NCAA tournament run, where Kihei made those big plays. You had big shots down the stretch. Just how close these games were, the type of teams you had to beat. I mean, they're going to look back on this and think about these little turning points in either the games or the tournament. And it's just going to be, again, an unbelievable documentary we're going to see for a long time. We're trying to wait for the moment as they get to officially celebrate. Up, Listen, I'm just going to say they're blue bottles. They, they're not champagne, I'm sure. It's uh, what kind of like seltzer water? Oh, maybe seltzer. in there. Aren't doesn't matter because hey, Keats is in there now. I was wondering if that's where they were well, waiting Keats doesn't for. drink, so I know he's not doing that. Well, you can, you can just pop it. That's it, yeah. regardless of what it is. But he's going to celebrate okay. the right way. See, he doesn't even know what he's doing. I'm wondering, if, <laughs> right, <they're, that's> <laughs> I, I'm wondering if they were waiting for somebody that was not there, but Better now that they're out there, here yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, we love they it. They deserve it, man. They deserve it. Yes, they do.
They got it all. Oh, that's just tap everywhere. water. It's <laughs> definitely just tap water. Hey, that's special too, though. We didn't get to talk about his son also being on the team. We saw his wife a second ago. But to have the opportunity to win this with so many guys that mean so many, uh, so much to to this program, it's it's pretty special. Those boys were so tiny when I first met them at Hargrave Military Academy about a hundred years ago. Yeah. To see him now surfing with the sticker to go put it on the board every day, just so great. Well, you love to have your son with you. I mean, that's a, there's nothing better than that. I had that opportunity. But to just see these guys five days ago, they're going home. You know, they're going to come here and lose a game go home, too. And now they're, they're limitless potential for this team in this tournament. I agree. They're going to beat a couple people. Yeah. I don't care where they're seated. You had a team in 2016 that made an unlikely run to the Final Four. What's it about this time of year, getting rolling in a tournament like this that can propel you to make that run? Well, there is no formula, because if there was, we'd all be used. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just does come together. I mean, the pieces, you know, I think really O'Connell made this team. I mean, I really think he has, and now they've got everything. They've got a good backup center. Yeah. It, obviously, Burns is good. Diara can play big forward. He can middle play in the middle. middle. Uh, you know, they've got three guys that can score on the perimeter. There's no guy that can't. Marcel has scored 20. Yep. Taylor scored 20. Horn scored 20. You know, that's three perimeter guys. And DJ Horn scored 20. Yep. That's four guys in your team that have scored 20 more than one or <laughs> two times. It's hard to have a real off game. Last night they beat a pretty good team, and Taylor had, what, two points, was it? Mm -hmm. And you know they've got they've got that luxury. Carolina, a couple of their best players, their starters, had bad games tonight. They can't they can't recover from that. NC State, I'm um, going to have a little bit of time to soak it all up. The Selection Sunday coming your way tomorrow. I can't wait to see what the committee does with them, where they are, because I'm sure no team wants to play NC State right now with the way that they are playing. Mm -hmm. On the other side of this break, though, we've got to talk about North Carolina. Absolutely battled out here on the hardwood tonight as well. No ACC tournament title for them this year, but will it be a number one seed? What's next for the Char Heels? Welcome back into Nothing But Net. NC State is your ACC tournament champion. They have won their 11th title. Meanwhile, North Carolina on the other side. Listen, fans, here's something that you can be optimistic about. The last four national titles that the Tar Heels have won, they didn't win the ACC tournament. So, still plenty to play for, plenty to look ahead to for this North Carolina team, but right now let's go out to the podium. Hubert Davis standing by just spoke a few moments ago. We just couldn't guard them tonight. I mean, they shot, was it 54%, 55% from the field. That's just not going to get it done. We've, um, in regards to us, we've talked about all year that it starts with defense and rebounding and taking care of the basketball. And the first thing that I always mention is defense. And so, for us, and, you know, statistically throughout the ACC, we've been number one in terms of all the metrics defensively, um, allowing a team, any team, to shoot 55% for a game, that's just not going to work. And so it's, um, you know, a credit that we stayed in the game, but it was just we just didn't, um, from a defensive standpoint, we weren't able to guard them one-on-one, -on -one, whether it's on the post, uh, isolations out on the wing, didn't play the type of defense that you have to have in order to win games like this. Definitely disappointed. Uh, you know, got to the championship game and came up short. Um, and didn't play our best basketball today. Um, so, I mean, I know that was one of our goals going to the season, uh, but we just came up short. But um, Coach Davis always talks about our response and, um, and how we're going to respond when we get knocked down. So going into the March Madness, we're going to have to uh, you know, prepare, come together as a group and uh, fix the mistakes that we made tonight. Well, I've said it before, you know, for us to be the best that we can be, especially in games like this, you're just going to have to defend, rebound, and take care of the basketball. And so um, we'll go back to work uh, when we get back home and prepare and practice and wherever they send us and whomever we play, we'll, we'll be prepared and and be prepared to uh, be the best that we can be when we get out there on the floor next week. I think too much is made out of five games in five days. Uh, you have a chance to play in this tournament. You have a chance to win a championship. It does. 
us growing up, we, we played three games in one day, you know, and so um, getting an opportunity to play at this level in this tournament and for a championship, it doesn't matter how many overtimes, how many games you play in a row. Um, we knew that um, that they would play with great energy, and, and um, they did from the start and throughout the entire game. That's true. All right, that was the Tar Heels after falling to NC State here at Capital One Arena. But there is still a lot of season left for North Carolina. We'll see where they're seated, if they get a one seed, if they get a two seed. Booz, what's your big takeaway about what we saw from North Carolina and some of the things that they mentioned they can fix moving forward? I mean, they're a great basketball team. Let's not get it twisted because they lost the game tonight. They're still a team that could be in the Final Four very easily. They got a bucket getter, a straight walking bucket in R.J. Davis. They got a beast on the block in Armando Baycott. What I learned about this team is the other guys have to step up. Other guys, have, there has to be a third guy, maybe a fourth guy. Maybe they do it by committee. Um, I just felt like there was just those two against NC State a lot of the night. They got open shots. They missed them. They could have got stops. They didn't get the stops they needed to get. I felt like Mo Diara had an incredible impact on this game. Usually we see, like Harrison Ingram dominated this matchup during the regular season in both Twice. games. Yep. And he was almost like a no-show tonight, not enough. He had, a, he had a three late that kind of got him out there, but Cormac Ryan, a lot of wide open shots, missed those shots. Somebody else has to step up around Armando and around RJ to help this team win. That's how I felt. Yeah, this is still one of the best teams in the country. No they, question they about that. No. A team that was on fire. Yep. That had all the pieces to the puzzle that was scoring at such a high rate. I mean, going into this game, I really felt like this, this NC State team is destiny. They're going to win this thing. And it could be a great lesson. Like you saw those four years mm -hmm. where they lose in the conference tournament. Those things can galvanize your team. They can bring you together. Joel, you can talk about that experience. It's not fun to lose in this tournament. No. You know, there are happy tears and there are sad tears. I'm glad NC State got happy tears. And Carolina gets to look at the NCAA tournament still as a potential one seed. I certainly think they're a one Joe seed. Joe Lenardi does still have them as a one but, seed. You know, just Arizona FYI. lost to Oregon, right? Mm -hmm. Syracuse beat up on Oregon. You got the Big 12. Ohio State's running rough. Shot Virginia Tech beat up on them. Like, this league is tough. NC State is a better team than people realize. Kevin Keats is a better coach than people have given him credit for. You can certainly make a run from this. I know you, you'll talk about that experience a little bit. Yeah, we lost in the 2017 year, and we went back, and we were able to gather ourselves, and we knew that we still had a chance. That's the thing. It's like this is what's so great about you, you don't want to lose in this tournament, but when, if you do lose and you're in the position of, of Carolina, now you get a chance to go yeah. back, you get some rest, you look at where you're seated. You look at your, your region and what's going on, and then you get ready for that. And that's what you have to do. You have to push the – now it's another season. We talk about coming into the ACC tournament being one season. Now you go into another season. And that's how we approached it in that year. And we were able to get through the tournament and win it all. But it was just – we were able to hit that reset. Can I, can I say something real quick? I think R.J. Davis and Armando Baycott would rather win an NCAA championship. No doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. You know, the whole thing, no we, in 03, we lost in the semis of the Big East tournament, and we went out and won the thing. That's what people remember. Nobody remembers, oh, by the way, in 03, you didn't win the Big East. No, they don't remember that. Right. If Carolina goes Only out, if they win the big one. If, well, no, if they make a, <laughs> I think if they make a really good run, yeah. the, the people will. That's what – and we don't may not like it. Who won the conference championship four years ago? Nobody knows. Who won the Georgia tournament? Tech. Who won? No. <laughs> hey, Wrong. I was like, Jake probably knows. That was three years ago, but that's okay. <laughs> but North Carolina is a really good team, but yeah. Carlos has got it right. Those other guys does have it, got to step does up. Does it take the pressure off a little bit? Obviously, you, you want to be on a win streak. You want to do all of these things, but – Losing that game, it's like, okay, now we get a reset instead of... No. No, I think it, it, they wanted it. It's different. I well, think no, it I mean, now you, that you have a loss and you're oh, not on you. a 10-game, 11-game win streak as you head into that, and yeah, when you go you're going to be a one seed either way. Turn. It doesn't matter. When you go to the NCAA tournament, that's all that matters. It's, I mean, it's not that you lost here or won there. It's what you do. And you, it's what Kevin did here, mm -hmm. one game at a time, let's go get a game. Yeah, exactly. And go from there. Yeah. So NC State's in the tournament. North Carolina is in the tournament, projected still as a one seed by Joe Lenardi. Let's talk about some of those teams from the ACC that are on the outside of the bubble looking in and what the future could be like for them. We're talking Pitt. We're talking Wake coming up next. This is one and one. And he missed it. 
Four seconds. O'Connell gets it off. And oh! Michael O'Connell banks in a prayer to send this game to overtime. You should hear the commentary over here. It's, I can't believe it. That was unbelievable. Believe that it. was so great. NC State, that was one of the signature moments of the tournament as O'Connell hit that shot. And you see now NC State and Joe Lenardi's bracketology with the auto bid. North Carolina is still a one seed. We know Duke and Clemson in the tournament. But Virginia and Pitt among the first four and next four out. Wake no longer on that screen. Let's start with Virginia, Coach. This will be quick. They're the third best team in this league and they'd be in the tournament if a guy doesn't bank a three against them mm-hmm. so you're going to keep them out because of that they beat florida they're a tremendous team they're in the tournament booze let's talk about pitt seven road wins dominant will beat a couple teams in the tournament they gotta be in so we'll see what happens with those two the one that's on the further side out not in joe Lenardi's bubble anymore is wait first forest joe you all that the committee will look at them without efton reed and with efton reed they're a totally different team and when they got him back they're you know they have they have all the pieces that they need this looks like a tournament team we'll see you tomorrow as we have selection sunday coming your way and we'll have full coverage right here on acc network the selection show full hour long for the men full hour long for the women starting at nine o'clock then the women's crew at 10 o'clock right here on acc network we'll break down all the paths how many teams and hopefully nobody has to throw papers like luke hancock because they are mad meanwhile first acc title for the pack since 19 19- 1987, and that one was just nine miles away in Maryland, DMV area. Pretty good to the Wolfpack. Jim Valvano and his sixth seed Wolfpack upset North Carolina, just like they did tonight. We'll be back after this. Welcome back into Nothing But Net time for the T Row Price dynamic play of the game, and it's got to go to the big man, DJ Horn. The bucket and the foul with 7.04 to go, Moose. That was a great play. Huge moment right there for, for NC State to get this bucket and go make the free throw because Carolina was coming. Great player right there. When you call him the big man, it probably is not fitting because I was thinking that we were about to see DJ, DJ Burns, Burns, the big man. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, we're talking DJ Horn. Both the big DJs part of the ACC All-Tournament th- team. But uh, you guys feel like we needed one more spot? Well, I think we need like a six-man on the first team kind of thing. I don't know. All those guys are deserving. Don't yeah. get me wrong. O'Connell being on there with a big shot, DJ Burns and DJ Horn, absolutely incredible. But I've been screaming Mo Diara's name over here all tournament long. Tonight, 11 points, 14 rebounds, two blocks, three steals. He was everywhere. Defensive stopper, rebounder. The guy just is all over the floor. Yeah, Mo Diara was a, a difference maker, but we can't forget about Michael O'Connell. Yeah. If they wouldn't be in this position <laughs> to win the ACC championship if it, if it wasn't for that big shot and then double digits in every single game in the tournament, he stepped up big for NC State. And, Kelsey, we cannot forget. There's mm. two things we cannot forget. Long Beach State <laughs> is in the NCAA tournament with a coach that was fired five days ago. Crazy. I'm Are you out of your crazy mind out there at <laughs> Long Beach? The sun getting to you? And the other thing is the four of us geniuses of basketball got beaten the picks by none other than Kelsey. Congrats, Kels. The champ is here. The champ the is in champ the building. The champ is here. And Luke won the golf. And oh. the best. <laughs> That's where oh. I was going. <laughs> These two guys I we weren't talking about didn't that. win anything. They didn't. <laughs> oh, coach. Uh, we got coach. the footage of all of coach. it. Maybe I'm, we'll bring I'm it back for the selection I'm, show. I'm here with y'all in D.C. I'm winning, coach. <laughs> uh, it has been a great tournament here in D.C. Thanks to everybody back in Bristol for all the hard work. Our crew here that has been grinding it out day in and day out for the last five days. And speaking of grinding it out, how about the Wolf Pack? Five wins and five days and a spot in the NCAA tournament. Congratulations to NC State. First one in 37 years. Join us tomorrow on ACC Network for our selection show special for the men and the women. We'll see you tomorrow from Bristol.